live at 401 Games for the Prototype Toronto League Season 9 Grand Final. We are happily streaming from the downtown uh, core of Toronto, the corner of Young and Wellesley, 401 Games, a wonderful uh, supplier for all things tabletop in Toronto. Uh, we are your hosts, I'm Timbo Slice. And I'm uh, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff is joining us first. Uh, Jeff Asiri is the Prototype Toronto League Season 8 uh, champion, the, uh, about to hand off his crown to one of these two players in front of us here tonight. Jeff, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me, both you and Victor. I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. No problem, buddy. We, uh, we, we got a one goal for tonight, and that's to come up with a, a call sign nickname for you while we're, uh, while we're streaming this match. Okay, we'll, we'll put our hits together. We'll, we'll, Victor, make this work. we'll make it work. Yeah. So uh, we're going to jump right in here. we got turn zero off uh, on the go. We've got two players, Aaron uh, Pappenhausen, who you saw in our semifinal match last week against uh, Raf B. And uh, he is playing our sitting league boss, uh, Devin Monkhouse. Now, uh, don't really see turn zero being as crucial in this game as we did in the semifinal there, Jeff. No, absolutely not. Both these guys are flying ships that fly much faster than the last video we saw. So I'm expecting a lot of repositioning and that they're going to want a lot of open lanes to move around. I would agree completely. When, you, when you've when you got that many ships, uh, especially the strikers that have to, it's not a may take that one bank, one forward aileron. It's they a must. Actually, it's a must. You definitely want to have enough room for them to do their uh, their shenanigans without uh, uh, impacting rocks. It doesn't look like anybody brought an asteroid tonight, so we're not going to have to worry about uh, stress tokens from the obstacles, but it looks like... Uh, Three of the t biggest rocks. We got the U, the little one. Nobody brought the middle finger. No, okay. not today. This is a friendly match, Tim. But it looks like they're coming up with that circle of death right in the middle of the uh, map. So hopefully that comes interestingly into play later on. Looks like the valley of death in the middle there. That looks very interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching many, many ships collide with rocks in this one. Holy Hera full of grace as I walk through oh. the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> Praise me. <laughs> Praise me. Well, um, let's... Uh, Talk about the layout that they've got their ships going now, Jeff. So we've got two players. Uh, we have established whom has initiative, which would definitely be uh, Devin, because he has a PS1 that has gone down first. Devin has the 12-point uh, Academy pie, TIE Fighter, which is never a poorly spent 12 points. Not whatsoever. I would say the only 12 points you could possibly spend that's better than a Academy TIE would be... That'd be an Aldra. Now just 14 oh, with the light sink. With salad. the light sink, yep. Oh, Sunny, Sunny Bounder. Bounder. Sunny Bounder. How can I forget man. Sunny Bounder? I mean, I'm a little biased because I'm a big scum player, but. Uh, I've been burned once or twice by the little guy, so yeah. <laughs> so forgive me if it skips my memory from time to time. Well, we're happy to have you here as well tonight because you're a, you're a diehard Imperial player. And uh, it looks like we've got four, uh, two absolutely top notch uh, Imperial four ship lists on the go here tonight for the PTL final. Um, I mean, both of these players are longtime PTL members, uh, upstanding gentlemen, and guys who prefer to have just a really good corker of a match, then ne neither of them have something overly uh, invested in winning. I mean, obviously both of them would like to win, of course but uh, I don't foresee either of them you know, collapsing into tears if, if one of them knows. I think they're just going to really enjoy having a great match. So at this point now we've got... Um, Aaron setting up his ships. Now, you're the reigning Imperial expert uh, because these, this match, I believe, after we get a little bit of popularity behind it, is going to help hashtag make Imperials great again. Ooh, hashtag make Imperials great again, buddy. <laughs> so you go ahead first, and uh, why don't you talk about our, uh, our left player, Aaron P's list. So Aaron came with a list. I really like this list a lot. I'm a big fan of TIE Strikers, and he's come with three of them here. Now, he came with the Black Squadron Scout, whose adaptability to up to five, so he can control the movement between him and Countdown. He's going to use that Imperial Trainee out front so that he can use it as a blocker, maybe to get some flanking as this game goes on. Now, my personal favorite striker is Countdown right here. Final Countdown, and I think throughout the match we're going to try to queue up what will be a song that hopefully we play and not have me whistle. <laughs> yeah, we'll get him. I won't whistle we'll, anymore, we'll, we'll I promise. We'll get it, don't worry. And uh, close it all out, Aaron's flying one of my favorite pilots, Quick Draw, with Veteran Instincts going up to 11. Fire control system, pattern analyzer, lightweight frame, and the title. What a nasty ship, Tim. It definitely is. I mean, and only two of the ships in Aaron's list actually have pilot abilities. You've got Quick Draw, who's pretty well known. If he, the first time each round that he loses a shield, he gets to attack. So that if he takes an attack, or if he takes damage from flying through a rock, or if um, you know any any such thing happens that he loses a shield, he gets to to have that attack, which resolves in step nine. 
of the uh, the attack chiming chart. Not step seven, strangely enough. I Which don't know is why. odd, yes. I find I that odd why. as well. And then the other uh, ship that has the pilot ability is Countdown. And Countdown's pilot ability in any matchup is extremely powerful, Jeff. And why is that? Well, especially if he's the last ship on the board. Countdown's ability is simply, if he takes any amount of damage, he is able to cancel all damage and take one and a stress token, which is extremely useful, especially later on in the match, if there's only one or two ships firing on it. That's really interesting, Jeff. So let me just theorize here for some of the newer players that are watching. Aaron has taken a two-point upgrade to equip Countdown with lightweight frames, which basically says that Countdown can roll an extra defense die. But what would the interaction between Countdown's pilot ability and something like Stealth Device be? So Stealth Device is good, but I'm not a big fan of it. So Stealth Device would continue to stay on, correct me if I'm wrong, because he's not actually taking the damage. He's cancelling the results to take the damage. But I'm a bigger fan of just putting a hull upgrade on Countdown. Giving him that extra one turn of mitigating damage is absolutely... And you know what, the three points for hull or Stealth, it's, it's six half windows in the other. A lot of people talk about... Stealth device being great because if you do use his pilot ability, you retain stealth because you haven't been hit by an attack. Correct. Um, and then the hull upgrade just gets you to do it one more turn. Uh, some people argue if you've only got one point, put a twin ion engine on him so he can clear the stress from his pilot ability a little bit easier. Um, but you know what? It's 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 all about preference and it's all about uh, list control, right? So I think you're right, Tim. Um, and uh, Devin's a smart player. He's not probably not going to engage Countdown one on one. He's going to pick his moments where he can put multiple shots on the ship, so he doesn't uh, get screwed by the ability. Pardon my French. That's no, all good. So Tim, if you could take us into what Devin is flying here on the right. Very happy to our uh, our fearless leader, Mr. Devin Monkhouse, PTL sitting lead boss. First time in a grand final. Oh, really? I didn't know I believe that. He's got, his, he's got his name on the trophy more time than anybody else, I think. A collusion! <laughs> um, but, no, other than that, he uh, he's, he's a great player. He, he's a great mentor for a lot of the newer players. And uh, just an absolute diehard Imperial uh, fan. And, you know, we, we've, we've spoken a little bit about, um, or we will be speaking about, I should say, the FAQ. That's just been released recently. We have a two-hour match tonight, and I reckon there's going to be plenty of uh, turns to do it, so we're going to be uh, talking about that. But now that that has happened, Devin is as happy as a pig in shit, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely, Tim. This is a man who's flown a lot of swarms, a lot of mini swarms, and was just being absolutely devastated and discouraged by the bomblets, the nims, the action bombs. Now, I know he's not a big fan of these new crazy things called harpoon missiles, true but it was the bombs more than anything the the advanced slam bomb k-wing being able to bombing lane your whole squadron from range four and you know nim being able to just bump into your whole squad drop a bomb and then give her the whole game long uh, that's kind of what discouraged a lot of imperial players but um, I would agree. aaron looks like he's moving his squad up the left hand side to engage devon at the top of the rock formation I mean, it doesn't look like anybody wants to go into that uh, Valley of the Shadow of Death there. No, I don't think so, but uh, this also might be a fake on his part. It'll be interesting to see in a couple of turns if he uses it to turn up board, trying to get Devin to commit to one side or the other. I'm just going to wait until Aaron has finished his activation phase and see where his list takes us before going into Devin's ships, because I really want to see... Uh, it looks like Aaron is going to split his ships up. Interesting. Those flashy PTL templates. Oh, those gorgeous-looking PTL templates. Did you get some of those? I got one of those. I got on a set of the Imperial ones, Tim, and honestly, my only regret with them is that I didn't get the tricolored set. I really oh, yeah? wish I had gotten the uh, the mix. As you can see there, Aaron has one of the Red Rebel ones, and he was using one of the Blue Imperial ones. We also have these gorgeous Yellow Scum ones, and if you got the mix set, it was in PTL's colors. Well, I went with the Blue Imperial ones because I'm a Chelsea fan, and blue is the color. Football's a game. Mm. Chelsea fan. Well, there might be more than one match going on tonight, folks, because I am a big Arsenal fan. Victor, I want him off the stream immediately. Just kick him right off. We're, uh, we're Security, pick, remove, folks, remove this man. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. So we've got uh, Countdown moving bottom of the board. Maybe Aaron will be faking to the middle. I'm not sure here. Devin looks like he's just going to do a three turn from Merrick Steele, who's my favorite piece on the board at the moment. I'll go through that in a minute. Doesn't look like we're going to have any shots, so we'll go into Devin's list. So we've already established that Devin has initiative. We know that because the PS1 uh, Academy pilot has moved first. Um, Devin also has a TIE Bomber at PS2, which he's equipped with the Tile Shuttle um, 
systems officer, and I believe the crew card that won you the finals last year, if I'm not mistaken, because you scoped out. You seem to be talking about intelligence agent there, Tim. I find the card is not only a great card, but incredibly useful, especially in this situation. The ability to know what and where your opponent is going the following turn is just invaluable, especially for the one point. I couldn't agree more, Jeff. I mean, a lot of people get really worried when you're uh, when you're going into a matchup, especially when you haven't brought a PS9 or a PS10 or something like that, and people get worried that they're going to get out pilot skilled and then they're not going to be able to compete in the match. But regardless of what pilot skill you bring, if you bring one or two intelligence agents, uh, I don't care what pilot skill, I know exactly what you're doing. Sometimes I can do something about it, sometimes I can't, but... Regardless, it gives uh, Aaron much more to think about in his target priority. Absolutely. Systems officer is real simple. If the bomber does a green, uh, then he gets to assign a free target lock to somebody at range one. Um, Lieutenant Kestel is one of the ace tie aggressors. Now, Devin has been a very big fan of the uh, tie aggressor since it came out. He actually took four TLT aggressors to one of the last store championships of the season at Black Knight Games in Hamilton and just wrecked face all day long. That's, that's just a gross list, no matter how you look oh, at it. Oh, it is gross. Tim. <laughs> you think Y-Wings with a hinge was bad. These things are even worse. Uh, the ability to reposition with four TLTs is just a combo that uh, uh, someone who's very skilled will fly very, very efficiently. Now, a lot of people will look at this list immediately and think to themselves, what was Devin smoking? Why has he brought an ion cannon turret and not a TLT? Well, both of these guys, like I said, are longtime PTL fan, uh, players and they're really into providing uh, the community with great games to watch and learn from so as we do in the PTL before the game uh, both of them spoke to each other and said so how are we going to do this it's a lot like two gunslingers uh, deciding when and where at uh, what stroke of what time they're going to have a showdown in the square <laughs> so both of them said to themselves you know what let's have a great match let's have four ships no Palpatine no TLTs and no guns for hire and that's a real interesting choice. Why do you think they took no Guns for Hire in this final match? Well, Guns for Hire came out four days ago on Thursday of last week. I think that given that they've gotten to the end of this season having played a whole bunch of pilots and not being able to repeat those pilots, for four or five really, really decent pilots to be suddenly dumped into that availability pool to then be able to be chosen for a final match... It's not really in keeping with the, uh, the sense of fairness that we're, we're all really keen on playing with. So they just said, you know what, let's keep it easy. Let's find a match. Uh, let's have Devin completely smash his ships and just... That's part of his strategy, it's, it's, I think, Tim. Let's, let's see how this one cut. pays off. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not like chess and he didn't just tip his king. Otherwise, this game would have been uh, a lot shorter. Our judge, Billy, just double-checking everything there. Everything good to go. Billy, uh, with those chops, I would believe anything he says. He's quite authoritative with those uh, mutton chops going on right now. I'm liking it. Let me finish off Devin's list here. So Lieutenant Kestel is the tie aggressor. Brought himself an ion cannon turret. Range two, three dice. If you hit, one damage and an ion. Lightweight frame for the extra agility. And Predator to re-roll. And he looks like he's going to get to re-roll two dice against the trainee and one die against everybody else. Um, now, Lieutenant Kessel's pilot ability, in my opinion, is one of the meanest in the game. It says at the beginning of the... When you're attacking, before... Sorry, after your opponent rolls his dice to defend, but before he can modify those defense dice, you may spend one focus token to eliminate all of his blank and focus results. Which can be really mean in the right situation. If you have an ace with auto thrusters, the ability to take away that uh, whole card is huge, right? You can get a Fenral rolling with a couple of focuses and a blank, and you suddenly turn it into a massive amount of damage against a single ship. Nothing's better than, like, rolling a, a primary from Kestel, like two or three dice, and then your ace rolls, like, four focus results. <laughs> you just cancel it and push it through. Boom. I love it. Uh, so I got patched up against a guy at a tournament one time. He had um, Kestel with ruthlessness and a TLT. That is disgusting. So he, he'd cancel my evade result with one focus, and then hit me with one TLT volley, ruthlessness another ship, second TLT volley, ruthlessness the second ship. So he's doing four damage a turn with a TLT. And that is an amazing ability. Now for those of uh, the people that are listening, Tim, what exactly does ruthlessness do? It's one of the best cards if you ask me, but you really gotta make sure that it's the right matchup. It's a three point elite pilot talent that says, after you perform an attack that hits, you must choose one other ship at range one of the defender, except yourself, 
to deal one damage to, which means <laughs> you part. might you might have to do it to yourself. <laughs> and that's why it's ruthless, Tim. I absolutely love it. Uh, the last one of Devin's ships is an X7 defender, saying that he does three or three or faster res, uh, speed, gets his free evade, uh, Merrick steals, so he's going to use that juke uh, pilot ability of his. Merrick steals pilot ability, one of the most clutch pilot abilities in the game, says when your attack deals a face-up damage card, instead draw the first three cards of the damage deck, flip them over, choose which crit you want, and discard the other two. Now this ability would be really powerful in this matchup, considering three of the ships that Aaron has, has absolutely no shields to protect themselves from it. Now I don't see him doing it to Countdown, because Countdown always has his ability to cancel the damage card given and just taking one, but it could see a real impact against these other two, three ships. Well, especially against that Academy tie, right? You, you draw a direct hit, sometimes that's, that's it. It's curtains. Um, Kestel's only got one shield, to your point. And, um, and you know, the, the, bomber, the Bombers don't like wearing crits for very long. No, so. they don't. It doesn't look good on them, Tim. Um, I was just describing Devon ships. I'm, I'm sorry, folks. I apologize. It was, <laughs> yeah, so De Aaron's the one who could be taking the crits from Devon's Merrick Steel. Uh, but even Quick Draw, you know, like, you land one crit on Quick Draw, and then you draw, up like, um, damage Cockpit or some nonsense. Oh, did Aaron miss the rock? Everybody clinch! Aaron... Uh, no, he's hit it! Clipped the rock, unfortunately. That is oh. a unfortunate turn of events. Oh, safe as sound. What an exciting start. Very exciting start. Now, because uh, that was his aileron, he still gets to complete his movement. Now, he will not get an action for hitting the rock, but that is okay because at least he still has an ability to move off it this turn. Boy, I tell you, that countdown, he just dodged himself a bullet there, didn't he? <laughs> I'm always a fan. This is probably my favorite ship on the board right now. I hope he goes all the way to the end, and then we could call him the final countdown, which is queuing up. We will hopefully get that music turned up in a bit and have Oh, it's loud enough. Trust me. Stop. Victor brings the most powerful microphones. <laughs> Victor giving us instructions. <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. No problem. <laughs> that is true. Ignore that last part, folks. We're, We're gonna... looking forward to bringing you an excellent match. <laughs> and if anybody's listening, don't sue. <laughs> Sorry, from now on, we'll just do the humming part. Do -do -do -do. That's fine, with no infringement implied. Okay, so we've got Devin's squad uh, picking that lovely lane that exists between the two big rocks and the three smaller rocks in the middle. Aaron's casting himself a wide net here, Jeff. I wonder why he's doing that. Any, any insight onto, into that? What's the benefit for Aaron casting such a wide net with his strikers? Oh, the benefit here, these strikers move so fast, and Devin seems to have committed early to flying his group in a tight formation. Now, Devin's a really good formation flyer, and Aaron probably is well aware of this. So he's going to split his forces, try to get Devin to commit to one side or another, and come in on the flank. Now, I'd be very surprised here if Devin would follow up the following turn by coming into this middle lane you see in the middle of the map, Tim. So I imagine he's going to try to head fake him and swing over to the lower side of the screen here and try to engage number three, Aaron Shep, the Black Squadron Scout. So I was really surprised to see Aaron barrel roll quick draw. I like that. I thought he was going to barrel roll to the right as far back as possible and give himself a banking option to get up into the middle of the map. But I guess he just doesn't, he doesn't want to feed quick draw to, to Devin here, does he? No, this is a really good endgame ship. If he can score some damage, maybe eliminate one or two of Devin's ship. Quick draw is very difficult to finish off with just one or two of these uh, remaining. Okay, so we've got uh, a couple of shots being exchanged here from the striker onto the academy tie pie. Looks like range three obstructed there. That was evaded cleanly. That was evaded cleanly. It sounds like the tie got away on that one, Tim. I would agree with you. Well, while they're going to think about their moves, I really think they're probably going to take a fair bit of time to consider this particular turn. Um, why don't you shed some light on us, Jeff, as somebody who made it to the end of the uh, PTL season last year, your experiences for getting to the top match, making the cut, winning prizes, and then what that did to the manner in which the players played against you in the following season? <laughs> it's a really interesting question, actually, Tim. Um, I found one of the biggest differences, no one brought anything easy against me from that point on. Everyone seemed to really want to headhunt, and I, I absolutely took pleasure in every single match I did this following, this next season. 
I personally have um, the pleasure of losing to both Aaron and Devin in this season. Oh, you and I share that pleasure. Oh, it was such a pleasure, Tim. Both but of us got <laughs> beat by these guys this year. We got taught a lesson, folks. I kind of wish there was at least the one game where I flew against Aaron because that was an absolute clinic on how to take apart another list. I had a great match against uh, Devin. I had, a, I had a Ghost, a U-Wing, and a Stress Bot Y-Wing. And then um, Devin brought his one of his favorite aces, Cabell, with PTL and Sync Turret. Uh, push the limit, I should say. Uh, a Jakku Gunrunner, uh, and then uh, Iman. But, yeah. Iman Azamine. Thank God you keep seeing these fire sprays. Now, I personally haven't seen an Imperial one in quite some time, but these uh, scum ones just keep showing up and are quite resilient. So let me ask you this, Jeff. Out of any of the pieces on the board here, particularly something that's going to be meta-heavy like Quick Draw and maybe Kestel, how do you think the recent FAQ is really going to affect them? I think the recent FAQ has made these ships stronger, if anything, there, Tim. Just because a lot of what is a natural enemy to them seems to have been um, not necessarily destroyed, but but weakened. A lot of their a lot of their natural things. The Atani lists. I was kind of disappointed with the Atani nerf. If we're going to talk about that for a second, but I would have liked to have seen maybe a, a range restriction. But restricting it to two ships definitely will eliminate a lot of competitive lists out there. Oh, I'm not. I'm not afraid to shame. I was planning on bringing my list, my link list to Mandalore, <laughs> but no, it's not happening. Out. Now it's not happening at all, folks. Now you're just going to have to tune in and see what Tim flies at Mandalore another time. Well, the uh, for the um, for the Coruscant Invitational qualifiers, I've actually put up uh, a link on the PTL Facebook page and gotten people to submit lists. And then I'm going to assign a number to each post and just pull at random, and that's the list I'm going to fly. And that's the true spirit of the PTL right there, folks. Uh, some people have put some pretty janky nonsense on that <laughs> janky list. Janky nonsense yes. is the best kind of nonsense to fly. <laughs> that's how we do it here in Toronto. So you had uh, a pretty good go this this season. I think you came one match. You didn't get to finish one of your matches, right? I did not get to finish one of my matches, but I got very close to the top eight again. But more than happy to sit back and watch and enjoy the excellent matches that happen in these playoffs with such a wide array of great players this year, Tim. Did you uh, did you manage to pull off the bonus points for Original Trilogy and Ewing and uh, non-Tie Advanced, um, sorry, non-Vader Tie Advanced? Non-Vader Tie Advanced, but my personal favorite, which was uh, I got to select this as one of my prizes for winning the last season, one of the bonus point ships, which is one of my favorite underrated uh, ships, would be the Mist Hunter, Tim. Oh, yeah, you won the Miss Hunter last year. I did year. win the Miss Hunter, and I did uh, win the option of making that a bonus point ship. I found it very interesting. I did fly it several times, and I can say I was only successful in one of those times in flying it. I love me a Miss Hunter with Ketsu Onyo crew. That thing is nasty. That is a gross ship, Tim. That yeah. is a gross ship. I hit you with my tractor beam, range one to two, I pull you closer, <laughs> and then next turn you don't get to clear that tractor beam token. Mine had a cloaking token, and uh, yeah, so mine could cloak, and it had the Mist Hunter title and the tractor beam. It actually makes it a lot of fun to fly, folks. I approve of any ship that can cloak with the scum cloaking device because there's always a chance it's going to break and there screw up your game. Always a chance. <laughs> now, in my game, it did not, and he actually ended up going almost the distance to the end there, which was uh, remarkable because they are capable of dishing out a lot of damage as it goes on with fire control system. Yeah, it's a great ship. I mean, the, 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 the caveat of having to must take a tractor beam is not a big, like, oh, I have to take a one-point cannon in order to get the awesome stuff that goes along with the Miss Hunter title. I'm okay with that. Well, you get the barrel roll, Tim, which is incredibly useful for that ship. To have it be able to decloak, move, and then barrel roll to reposition. Oh, everybody clinch! Oh, is Devin's barrel roll going to fit? Oh, it looks like it does. Okay. So Devin did a move right in front of the rock and then barrel roll to try and get arc on, looks like, uh, Countdown, who hasn't moved yet. -da 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 -da. And... Um, We've got the Black Squadron pilot in the corner who's about to activate now. My guess is Aaron's probably going to do the one bank, Erleron, maybe two turn or three bank. I'm not too sure here. I'm not even sure. He might do the uh, one bank there, Tim, and then do a three straight, trying to get behind him on that row. Ooh, he does the one hard. You know, you and I were talking about this before the match started. Merrick Steele is an X7 defender, and he's really hard to push damage through on. But... I don't know if I could think of a ship with a better dial for outmaneuvering defenders than the TIE Striker. I absolutely agree with you there, Tim. They are incredibly maneuverable. Again, one of my favorite ships right now currently in the game. And if there's one thing that can get right beside Merrick, it would be the one of these three strikers. Not one, folks. Three. So it looks like Aaron read Devin's mail uh, about where he was going with his academy pilot and his bomber. 
looks like his countdown is going to just say, you know what, I'm not having any of this. I'm going to try and get behind your squadron. Wow, that wide net that Aaron casted with those those strikers has really paid off for this him. This is starting to look like a really, really nasty trap that's coming out here, Tim. Now, it'll be interesting to see what Lieutenant Kestel's ion cannon turret is going to do here. I'm pretty sure Aaron has anticipated this, and yes, so as we see the reposition here, he is not letting his forces get within that range to uh, bubble of that ion cannon turret. It's a trap! It is a trap. There are a lot of rocks in the middle of that board. Devin wants Aaron to come close so that he can if he can ionize one of these guys, then he's just laughing. Merrick going after the number three, the Black Squadron uh, scout here. Probably going to get his free evade. Uh, Devin, considering the target lock, is taking the target lock with those uh, very sexy and well-earned Canadian national target Ooh, lock tokens. Those are very nice-looking target locks. Tim, is that where you got them from? Well, Devin did pretty well at uh, Canadian Nationals, uh, considering that he... You know, got all the prizes. He didn't actually play, <laughs> but you know, he did pretty well. And that's the best way, folks. Participation. That seems to be the way. Uh, no, he was the judge. <laughs> he was the <laughs> judge. <laughs> Aaron's got that fancy dial cover from the original trilogy tournament that Billy put on, which was great. That was. Uh, oh, that's that fantastic template you're talking about there in the bottom left corner. That's covering his dial. Yeah, it's a custom uh, acrylic uh, dial cover that. Uh, it's like we were saying earlier. You know, the participation prizes that we hand out here are much better than the actual prizes you get for winning top eight. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. I have had the pleasure of winning two, oh, three if you count the two TIE Fighters, painted by the amazing Eric Z, who was one of the top eight finishers. You won the season. mining ties? I won both mining oh. ties, sir, and I have his beautifully painted Kirax Fighter, which I try to fly as much as possible. Those yellow and black mining guild ties from the Starship Rebels uh, TV show are so cool. They were really, I couldn't believe, I was so... Thankful to have won them. I even offered to split them up so somebody else could enjoy them. But Eric really wanted to be given away as a pair. So I thank you again, Eric, because they are really well done. So it looks like we've got one shot coming up here. Looks like Merrick Steele going to take his range dose against uh, the Black Squadron scout here. Devin loading and locking. Two hits. We rolls with the target lock. Just remains two hits. Well, well, it's not exactly what you want to see here. So Aaron's lightweight frames do apply, so he's going to roll two dice and then one. An important note here, the juke is not important, because even if he was able to juke, which he is not here, Aaron would have the focus token to turn that result back over. So Aaron, look, considering to spend the token, is going to spend the token. One damage goes through. We have shots fired, shots fired. I'm interested to see why he decided whether or not to spend that token, Tim, because I'm not sure if he's going to have a shot here. I do know it is tough to judge. I would say uh, he range. probably has a range three obstructed shot on oh, the Oh, and the that bomber. was why he was debating. Bomber doesn't have a lot of uh, defense, and he's got that uh, he barrel rolled, so he's got no token. Uh, it's not a terrible call. It's you know the Black Squadron pilot now can probably almost definitely outmaneuver Merrick on this oh. turn here. Oh, and he rolls hot rolls fire, Tim. Hot fire. And the bomber looks like he's taking a crit. One crit to the bomber. Interesting to see what this will be. Structural damage. Structural damage is a doozy. Reducing the bomber's agility by one. Devin using that fancy Ontario's finest crit token. Ah, uh, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. No arc for the bomber. Uh, no range to quick draw for the Academy pilot on the striker. Academy pilot looks like he has range three on the black squadron pilot there. You are correct. Sorry, no, it's, uh, it's the Imperial trainee. I apologize. And that was a big whiff on the shot there, Tim. A whole lot of nothing. Stay on target indeed. It's Porkins that says that before he blows up, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, but look. Stay on target. Stay on target. Boom. Yeah. All right, oh, so we I got number two. Looks like uh, ion cannon turret. Two damage. Two damage. <laughs> no, that wasn't the ion cannon turret. That was somebody shooting at the bomber. Oh, that was the Imperial trainee shooting at the bomber. Oh, my. That bomber's getting another crit. Looks like a uh, major hull breach. Yeah. 
Billy, Major Hallbreach. Major Hallbreach, meaning the bomber as all cards face up next turn there, Jeff. And the important thing to notice here is now that he has two condition criticals on him, Tim, he is not able to turn down both in the next turn. He's going to have to choose between turning over that major hull breach, which is probably the safe bet, or rolling a die to increase his agility again. Well, when you get multiple crits, you have to you have to start realizing that you, you, you have a choice to make. So I've got a crit that reduces my agility, and I've got a crit that means that if I do get any damage, all of it's face up. I'd probably say the latter is probably more important to get rid of first. I would agree in that situation. Aaron has made it pretty clear what his target priority is here, and it'll be really interesting to see how Devin adjusts. Well, end of the first round of combat, we have uh, Aaron taking one damage on his striker in exchange for really one of Devin's more important support pieces, the uh, the intelligence agent systems officer, Ty Shuttle, at half health now. I mean, don't get half points, but essentially it's, it's half dead. This will be a big loss if he loses this early. I think he's going to try to play it safe, maybe turn this bomber to the left, hoping to play a block against his Black Squadron scout. Really interesting I find is that Quick Draw has almost no way to get into this fight right now. I would hesitate to believe that a one bank right would not land him on that rock. And you know, he might sloop left, which gives him arc back this way. But I think that Aaron was using Quick Draw to try and bait uh, Devin's squad here. But I really, I fear for the safety of our poor Black Squadron Scout number three, Red, in the bottom of the corner here. <laughs> Jeff, I don't see any reason why Devin wouldn't just turn all five of his guns, four, sorry, of his guns on that poor Scout and just end his day. <laughs> Seems to be what is going to happen here. But these players have both surprised me in the past, and in no way, shape, or form are they normally predictable. So if you had to pick one uh, change in the recent FAQ... Uh, they get launched. For everybody who doesn't know, that's uh, uh, FAQ uh, version 4.4.0 that came out recently. Um, some of it are calling it. Some of us are calling it Nerfgate. Oh, Nerfgate indeed. Um, Nerfageddon. Or, or I actually could not be more pleased with how they changed this game, Tim. They didn't actually change anything more per capita. So this FAQ has been longer coming than any other one. We've Correct. been waiting for an FAQ since March. And Has it really been that long? It's been that long. Wow. So we've gotten as much change in this as almost two or three FAQs. So we're really not getting as much. But what they've managed to do, I believe, honestly, with the exception of one thing that's just my own personal bias, I can honestly say that they really have brought most of the aspects of this game back into balance until the Alpha Star Wing comes out, of course. Oh, I'm really looking forward to the Alpha Star Wing, Tim, but I, I, I absolutely agree with you. I think a few of these um, nerfs from this nerf apocalypse were definitely not necessarily needed, but they're going to bring balance back to the force, and you're going to see a lot more diverse amount of ships coming to the board and showing up at major tournaments now. Okay, well, let's review some of the biggest changes, shall we? Um, the, uh, the, biggest, the, the biggest change that happened was probably uh, Advanced Slam. Advanced Slam uh, used to say something, and now it says, after performing a Slam action, if you do not overlap an obstacle or another ship, you may perform a free action on your action bar. So you're no longer allowed to say actions that are on bombs or anything other than it's actually on your action bar. See, I think that's an important change, Tim, because that did take away... It takes a lot of skill to set up those bombing runs to land them, but it also takes away a lot from the players who don't use them because it's automatic, unavoidable damage. In the end, I think the game is ultimately better that they have taken away this interaction with the Advanced Slam. I agree completely, and if Advanced Slam still did all that when the Alpha Star Wings came out, Christ on a cracker, that would be just completely broken. You would have heard me jigging live on camera right now. That's what you would have heard, Tim. Hey, 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 just doing a happy jig? All right, fair enough. Doing a happy jig inside for all these changes. Well, the other huge change, of course, was the change to Atani Mine Link. Um, this is, of course, um, now brought the, uh, the card back into a thematic relevance because uh, Manaru gave the Atani Mine Link technology to Dengar when Dengar saved Manaru from being uh, taken into the uh, Empire for Slavery. As a thank you, she shared her Atani Mine Link technology with him shortly before they were wed, of course, because Manaru and Dengar are husband and wife. So it really only should be two people using the Atani Mine Link uh, technology. But before, you could have four and five ship scum lists 
uh, with Mind Link on it. And it was just bonkers, especially the interaction between Mind Link and the Jump Masters. So, and um, again, as you see, the Jump Master being responsible for a couple of changes and nerfs to this game, while now being uh, affected itself by like, an Eratitim. Like five. <laughs> like yeah. Like there's five. Been a several actually. There's right? been like five changes <laughs> to the rules as a result of their interaction <laughs> which, with the Jump Master. Which personally, I'm not uh, too upset to see because I've been eliminated from several major tournaments from trip jumps with torpedoes. They are just an efficient ship. Good riddance to bad rubbish. You, uh, can, you can fly a Jump Master well still without torps. Go absolutely. ahead. Absolutely. Uh, I think it's a fine support ship now, but uh, you know, all said and done, we've got Billy getting in there to see if this aileron bumps. Looks like it doesn't. Aaron gets an action, and we proceed on. We'll get back to the action here before we get back to the FAQ, Jeff. We had... Devin do the two right turn from the tie there to try and cut off the striker. I was hoping for a bump with his back corner there, but it unfortunately was not to be. Aaron brings his um, Imperial trainee up into combat range, probably going after uh, Kestel, is my guess. As we expected, the bomber's coming about trying to block that um, black scout because now he's blocked the one bank aileron three straight or whatever have you. That is correct. Now it's a shame that movement by uh, Devin's academy pilot was not successful, but that was that was a really smart move from him. Trying to block the action there and trying to stop that trainee from sneaking through like it did. Looks like... Uh, oh, it looks like Devin tried to get rid of that structural... Uh, Structural damage instead of the uh, the other crit there, Tim. Yeah. Interesting call because, as we said, the other one was an actionable. He could have just actioned it away. This one, he took the chance on a 50-50 roll, and this time it uh, did not pan out for him. Huh. Well, I think, if anything, he might be, because this is the Black Squadron Scout at the bottom of your screen, number three, the red ship. So I think his plan might have been, if he swings Kestel into the left and he brings Merrick Steele a boat, he might be trying to just PS kill this ship there, Tim. A boot. A yeah. boot. Swing it a boot. Swinging it, swinging it a boot. Great white north here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, say that, right? <laughs> All right, so we've got the Black Squadron doing the and he's going to go for the sloop. Very ballsy move here, because Merrick's coming about. Probably still going to get range three after this, but you know what? Aaron figures if he can pull Devin into that corner, maybe he's going to get a better... Pursuit Vector. We don't know where um, Aaron's head's at for this one. As we follow all this action, you also have to remember that at some point, the Beast from the East, Quick Draw, number one, top left of your screen, is going to come into this action. Now, this is a really, really aggressive tanky ship that absolutely has had no impact, but probably will have a significant impact later on in this game. Well, Quick Draw is a late game monster, but if, 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 if Aaron gets Quick Draw too close to Kestel with that Ion Cannon turret, Quick draw's pilot ability goes right out the window if he gets on a rock because he's shredding those shields on the rock. And that's basically like giving up an extra ship in your list, every oh shield token. A very expensive 36-point extra ship there, Tim. Now, you, beyond most people, can know how valuable quick draw is. And I imagine that you could also know how devastating it can be when quick draw's pilot ability doesn't work out the way you, you think it. Do you, do you have any idea what I'm getting at here? I, I have a small idea for those that weren't here and are not psychic. Both Tim and I had a, a friendly practice match earlier today in which Ketsu Onu was able to one-shot quick draw from full health. Right at range one, Tim. That was uh, four damage going right through the shields. The crit was a direct uh, major explosion, which rolled the hit into the direct hit for big laughs, big guffaws had by all. Hashtag the dream. The dream, folks. We really wish we could have showed it to you live, but if you uh, need to see it, it'll be in my nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got Quick Draw doing the three sloop pattern analyzer for the boost. Looks like he's not going to get range on Kestel, unfortunately. And I don't believe he has arc on that academy pilot either. Oh, that's a rough spot to be because if that academy tide does have arc, he's just wasting shield tokens. Looks like Merrick's going to go first. We got Merrick range two against the Academy Pie. Rolls two with the target lock. We have two That's hits. twice he's done that. Reroll that twice. die. And juke is online here, folks. So he's going to juke that evade results into a focus. And we have... Lightweight frame keeps the striker alive. Yeah, with one damage one going damage. through. Striker on one health. Looks like the bomber might get a chance to finish him off here. But the Black Squadron Scout shoots first, and if he doesn't finish off that bomber, that bomber might finish him. Got Kessel Ion Cannon turret on the Striker. 
That is on the Imperial trainee, it is looking like. No, it's Kestel shooting at the scout. Or, sorry, it's Kestel shooting at uh, the uh, the Imperial trainee, the striker, number four. Oh, you are correct, Tim. Sorry, I apologize. Aaron's got his lightweight frames. He's got to dodge this or get ionized. Ooh, he's got the focus token to spend. Using Kessel's ability to cancel that focus result, and then the turret shot goes through. That is that ability right there that we were talking about earlier. What an awesome, awesome turn of events here. Looks like that. Uh, looks like that trainee's ionized now. <laughs> sure does. Now, hopefully, he doesn't do too much damage back to Kestel. But if it does, this match will get really interesting. So, what I'm actually not entirely sure on, and you're the in you're the imperial expert here, but I'll, I'll ask you when the combat phase is done, uh, is with the trainee ionized, how does an adaptive aileron still work? He still is he just as a one straight, one straight? He can aileron any direction. So aileron will happen before, as far as my understanding goes. So you might see him here to try to keep his angle on the craft he's pursuing. He can do the one bank aileron, and then his mover, maneuver would be the ionized maneuver. That's actually really great for Aaron because Kessel can't two turn left at this point. All right, so we've got the Ooh. scout shooting at the bomber three big hits rolling hot fire and these will be crits folks because two of dice that. two damage going through there on the bomber because of the critical already there console fire console for a fire third. and a direct hit oh there it goes and that's the end of the scimitar squadron okay so aaron is now officially up on points 19 to nothing excellent start just all the crits, like all of the crits on that poor bomber. That was, that we're, was pretty much worst case scenario. There, we were Tim. talking about how bombers don't like wearing crits. I think he got five out of six damage as crits. I, I think he did. I think you were right earlier when you said maybe he should have used his action to turn down that uh, that crit, but we will never know. We will never know. We will never know, folks. Okay, so we've got the, uh, looks like the striker number uh, two shooting at the academy pilot. Big fat nothing. Academy pilot is going to shoot back. Has Academy pilot got arc on quick draw. No, he's just going to shoot at the, He's just going to shoot at the trainee. Uh, looks like focus Rolling hit hot crit. fire, folks. The dream for a tie fighter hit That's crit. Not bad when the ship you're shooting at oh. has no shields. That'll hurt. That will hurt. Strikers now, interesting don't like to crits. note that was at countdown. Countdown is going to trigger his ability here. Oh, here we go. Negating the two damage, taking a stress, and only taking one damage in the fo in the process, folks. Oh, I love this ship, Tim, and I look forward to another three chances for this to trigger, so we can continue to sing this song. Holy moly! That is. That is a very. That is a really hurt very good castle. shot from that oh, train gosh. either. That is three hits and a crit going through on Kestel. My goodness. This could be interesting, folks. Let's see what this critical card is when it turns up. You can't see the crits behind the dice tray. Can't see it. Major hull breach again. That oh, is, my goodness. It's now, see, <laughs> it's not necessarily the worst critical to see in this situation because Kestel has one hit remaining. I think it's fair to say that uh, Aaron just took a big sledgehammer and uh, smoked Devin right in the feelings. That, uh, Devin will be feeling that one for a while there, Tim. Okay, so end of combat phase. Uh, we've got Aaron having used Countdown to take one damage. Uh, Black Squadron Scout number three should be down to one health, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm, not, I'm sure Billy, our judge, will be able I'm to I'm pretty sure he's up. down yeah. to one health, yeah. And then uh, Kestel... Lost his shield three hull. Kessel's on one hull. That's. It looks like there's a lot of work for Merrick Steele to do. Yeah, uh, it is I mean, an uphill battle. It's an X7 defender. He's got Juke. He's got an amazing pilot ability. It's not unheard of for an X7 defender to win in this situation, especially considering he can basically kill a striker per turn, uh, depending on what crit he pulls. But it's this, you know, Merrick Steele is one of those ships. A lot of people like Juke on him. I love uh, either. Um, a score to sell or marksmanship. Both excellent choices. I also personally have flown him with uh, calculation. Yeah, if you only got one point, calculation, Absolutely. great, or crack shot. Crack shot, again, yes. Um, Guarantee that crit goes through. VI to PS9 is another never a bad choice with an X7 defender. Uh, being able for everybody to move and then you do your... I mean, with the X7 nerf now that they get bumped, but yeah, anyway. Still a big fan of flying defenders, though, and this is definitely a tanky ship that cannot be underestimated. Well, I mean, we're getting back to some of the FAQ changes, Jeff, and 
on the subject of, of X7 Defenders, I think it's fair to say with the removal of Miranda being able to three slam action bomb from like range four away and just drop three cluster mine tokens right in the path <laughs> yeah. of your 4K, it's, it's definitely safe to say I think that we'll see a fair few uh, defenders because defenders aren't a bad counter to these new um, Alpha Star Wings and Rebel Bombers that are coming out because, you know, an Alpha Star Wing will get to shoot a missile, but defenders can take missile shots. Defenders can take missile shots very well, Tim. They're really, really tanky. you got to play against them very, very smart. A lot of blocking. You can't let them get that evade token, otherwise they'll continually evade your damage. So let's keep going on the uh, the nerf gate here. Um, the next and obviously biggest uh, change to the game was the change that they made to the zero-point uh, scum salvaged astromech droid genius, which ironically up until wave uh, 11 was completely unused. I think I used him once. Yeah, I never saw it play. It was more of a joke yeah, card up until... It was more of a joke card, because oh, why would you ever do that? <laughs> oh. Because he's a genius, Because he's a genius. Yeah. Uh, and then you, uh, the ship comes along that says, I don't care about bombs. Well... Yeah, I'll definitely take Genius. So they've, they've changed the wording on Genius now to read, after you reveal and execute a maneuver, if you did not overlap a ship, you may discard one of your equipped bomb upgrade cards without the action header to drop the corresponding bomb token. So I think that was a so, really interesting fix to a problem that was named Nim. It is true. I mean, Nim can still take extra munitions, and then he gets to post-maneuver bombs with genius which is still quite significant when you're playing against them but two is definitely much better than the well, several yeah, I mean, i've taken i've watched some games where people are dropping like six eight ten bombs yes post maneuver in a game post maneuver and that's a three point card in bomblet upgrade yeah getting quite a lot of value out of that net one net three points because genius doesn't cost you anything so i really like what they've done with it it doesn't take away the threat of nim rebel nim and scum nim are both still very viable ships you just have to fly them better which is great because we don't want easy mode tournaments and that's what this game seems to be going towards they want to put a lot of the skill back into flying and take away a lot of this unavoidable automatic damage so we got Aaron deciding to do the one straight aileron <laughs> doing the one straight aileron it looks like he is going to bump Kestel It's an interesting choice. It's an interesting choice. Before that, we were able to see Devin actually perform the K-turn there with the number four uh, Academy pilot at the top of your screen. I think it's unavoidable where this striker number two countdown is going to go. We're going to have Aaron take that ship, and he is going to... Yeah, it looks like right in front of that Academy pilot. So that was a really well thought out and planned move from Devin there. I'm really surprised that 4K fit. As am I, actually. I thought that was a I thought that was a bold choice there, Cotton. Bold strategy. That was Cotton. a bold strategy. See if it works out for him. Also, quick draw, probably going to do a one bank to clear that stress, so that Academy tie is now the valedictorian of his class. <laughs> yes, he is. It'll be interesting to see if he uh, takes the opportunity to oh, shoot I on quick draw. I love the Black Squadron scout here. That's amazing. That Just move. a great little two move. He's going to have to face Kestel's ion cannon turret. Not too fussed, but he's definitely blocked. Merrick's um, three bank, and if Merrick three turns upboard, then that scout's right on his six. Might be right on six. Maybe Devin pulled a, a Hail Mary here into the one bank. But he did do the one bank. He did the one bank because that, what? that might give him the ability to what? reposition with a barrel roll. Oh. Nice move, Devin. Both of these pilots flying top notch, as you guys can see, and I'd expect nothing less from either of these guys. No easy wins here at the PTL. Devin is absolutely going to make Aaron earn it, and it is still open for anybody to take this match, folks. Our Judge Billy going to have to get in there during the combat phase and see if Merrick Steele has that scout in arc. Devin actually just trying to contemplate it himself right now, or whether or not it's worth barrel rolling back into the left to set up the three right turn barrel roll the next turn. He's thinking, he's thinking... I think he's got the arc there. That's so close. It looks like he does from here. I'm sure our Judge Billy, he's never had a problem getting in there before, and I don't think he ever will there, Tim. I would have taken the target lock just in case that uh, he's not in arc, and then you have the target lock for next turn, but you know what? Six-half one doesn't the other, really. Beautiful move by Kessel. Really Dodging the arc move. by um, 
Dodging the arc of that striker Imperial trainee. And the black, oh, he's in arc of the Black Moon, the Black Squadron Scout, though. Ooh, that's four dice that, that Kessel just cannot afford to take at this point. Now, I think Devin here is contemplating taking the barrel roll to reposition to maybe get out of arc here. But I think he's also worried if he does, it might take him out of range two. He does opt to take the focus action here, which I think is the smarter move. Aaron definitely opting for the one bank there. Don't know if that Academy TIE pilot's going to have arc, but Quick Draw is just going to take his focus and uh, and let it be. Yeah, in it's the still Lords. a very, very dangerous ship end game here. And it looks like he will have that range three shot on Kestel. All right, so we've got Quick Draw going for the kill on Kestel here. Kestel's going to have three dice with no mods on defense because he flipped over that crit, the, uh, the major hull breach, of course. Quick draw, rolling it, getting hit crit, Kessel evading it. Oh, evading cleanly, and I think that's for the best for this match. So we'll have that continue on. Quick draw will still be a factor late, late into this game, though. 100%. Merrick Steele is going to have to start planning out his late game against Quick Draw because, okay, so we've got, looks like Kessel doing his. Uh, and he gets to roll two dice here, Tim, because of Predator, but it doesn't pan out for him in this situation. Woo. Just Natty evaded that. Just rolling hot fire, yeah. Aaron's dice certainly showed up to this match, Jeff. Seems to be measuring. Devin going for it. Thinks he has it. Thinks he doesn't have it. I don't think either of them have either. Either of them have either. Devin with his... Really nice little range one Ontario's finest. That is a beautiful, there. beautiful range ruler, Tim. How exactly do you go about getting one of those fine-looking uh, templates? You have to, you have to <laughs> spend a whole weekend traveling to a premier event and play horribly. <laughs> well, you get a, a nice little oh, prize to take home. Someone yell wow. natties. Someone yell natties. Natties, holy gosh, holy guacamole! This train will not stop. Looks like we've got the Academy type going range one on the striker here. Three dice, this nothing from down. nobody. Oh, we got one hit going through there. Very interesting. That seems to have been on countdown. So Aaron's Imperial uh, trainee there. Looks like range three to the back corner of Merrick Steele. Aaron's strikers have been rolling really efficiently here. Look at that. Spends a focus, evades it cleanly. Merrick Steele just laughing. So Merrick Steele set, him up, set himself up for a great little 4K the next turn. Uh, try and get back into this fight. Kessel's got to get out of dodge while Quick Draw's on his ass. Um, you know, if, if Kessel gets PS killed by Quick Draw here, it's in big trouble. Um... Devin's got great position with that academy tie. He can just two straight bump into the, uh, the striker and then stay on everybody six. Unless Aaron wants to use quick draw to just finish off that academy tie pilot. There's all the options in the world here. Let's go back to uh, page two of Nerfageddon here. Absolutely. One so, of these next ones is really interesting, and I'm really happy for this fix, Tim. Why don't you tell us what it is? No, no, you get it. It's all well, you, buddy. If I could take the pleasure. One of these ships has long been a thorn in my side as an Imperial player. I believe you used it to beat me in a quarterfinal match. I, I actually did, to, uh, to the chagrin of Tim. We unfortunately did not get that match on stream, but that would have been an absolute clinic had you seen Tim fly aces against how to not let bombers hit you and get their lanes. That was a great match. Um, I should have gotten a little bit more aggressive at a couple of times. I played it conservatively, and the clock got away from me. clock got away from you, but really, realistically, and I have no problem admitting this, I still would have beaten you had the match continued on. No, it's on. true. You're, you're <laughs> K-Wing Warder. You're, uh, Warden K-Wing off in the corner there. But very, very excited to see this change to a long-time card. It's now thematically changed, so Big's Dark Lighter now reads... Once per turn at the start of no, combat. No, 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 no. Once per game, Tim. I Once apologize. Per Once per game. Per game. You now declare to use his abilities where everyone must fire at you instead of other ships at range one. Amazing change. I think much needed. Hopefully, I know there's some people excited that maybe uh, an X-Wing fix could be forthcoming. I know a lot of people like flying this thematic ship. But most importantly, it opens up the Rebel list building and stops restricting it so much. 
So I have two things to say about this. I would love to hear that. The first thing, I'm so happy to hear about the big change because that means that there's definitely some sort of boost or uh, change or nerf or whatever you want to call it, some sort of buff to the T65 uh, platform in the works. Because you couldn't design something for the T65 X-Wing without drastically making Biggs too strong. Absolutely. If you wanted to give the T65 a new title that's similar to the Vaxai title that's just come out at Guns for Hire, I hope that happens. I don't care what they do to the T65. I want to get my hobby. I want to get my Tarn. <laughs> I want to get my rookie pilots back Tarn into this game. Tarn is an excellent and underrated pilot. Tarn is an exceptional pilot. It's the pilot. same cost as Biggs now. Tarn is. And Jess Pava yeah. with uh, R46 and selfless, uh, sorry, R2D6 selflessness and uh, it's the same cost as big. So, it's, you know, you're right. It opens up a lot of changes. The second thing I love the most is it, the answer to everybody's question after you hear about bigs is yes, there are acrylic bigs tokens <laughs> in the pipeline. So that is happening. That's amazing. Too. I'm really uh, I'm really excited for that change. Just so uh, <laughs> it opens up the diversity again. Everything comes back to diversity. And already we've seen that with the tournament that passed last weekend. Um uh, that happened here in Toronto. It was a very different. You saw a lot of phantoms. I was surprised at the amount of phantoms, and again at the amount of stress hogs that came out. Meta always adapting, folks. Well, bombers aren't gone, so so phantoms are still in big trouble. Um, more aces means more stress bot. Uh, y wings, more Braylon Strom gunner, uh, or bays R three A two gunner. You know, so it's really gonna be interesting to see what happens to the tournament scene in the next say six months. Um, between now and then, we're going to have Way 12 and 13 come out, and we're going to have um, the new meta rules take it effect, and it's really going to change the dynamic of uh, ships on the board. I can't wait to see. I know there's some people frustrated at the speed of which some of these releases come out, but I'm really excited, especially with this upcoming one. We're going to get five new ships. And with the fact that has just happened, this is just going to open up the possibilities you're going to see. I've got my Kylo Cruiser uh, pre-ordered. How about you, Jeff? My Kylancer is ready, and I can't wait for it to arrive. That's so, right, folks, Kylancer. And then just in case anybody watching doesn't know, I'm sure they do, but um, one of our PTL sponsors, uh, 401 Games, does definitely sell uh, X-Wing inventory at great prices downstairs from where we're filming. They take pre-orders. Uh, our other sponsor, Face to Face Games, in the, west, or, sorry, the east end of Toronto, uh, they actually offer discounts on pre-orders of X-Wing gear, so uh, any one of the places where the PTL play um, can fulfill your uh, your, your yeah, shopping needs. There. Yeah, I'd buy that for a dollar, Tim. I really would. Finishing off page two here before um, we get too far down the activation phase, uh, condition cards on destroyed ships. So condition cards that are assigned to ships are not removed when that ship is destroyed unless specified on the card, which is relevant if you suppress fire um, with Rex on a ship that destroys and there's simultaneous fire involved. It's a question that came up earlier. So then that, that condition would remain. We're going to underplay the importance of this next Murph, but it's the last one on the page, but we're going to do it anyway. It uh, wasn't really that big of a deal, this one. I'm going to sing for this one. Yeah, okay. I might Ding join you. dong, the jumps are dead. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked witch. Oh, I can't say the next part, but you all know what I wanted to say, folks. The Jump Master 5000 upgrade bar loses two torpedo upgrade slots and one un, uh, sorry, one salvaged astromech upgrade icon. So I think that that eliminates a huge amount, uh, coupled with the Itani nerf, of the types of um, interaction and jump lists that are available. Dengar without unhinged astromech is only slightly less awesome, so oh, he's still, it's still a viable ship. still a very ship. dangerous ship. Tell is still a very dangerous ship. Contracted scout with trick shot and uh, a poop shoot. And, uh, I'm a an personal fan of that shoot, Tim. And, you know, any pursuit laser is a poop shoot, an intel agent on a, on a, on a contracted stuff. It still has a lot of uh, capabilities. So. <laughs> a lot of capabilities to just ruin your plans for what you want to do. All right, let's get back into the action here. So Devin moved his TIE fighter to bank to get in front of the striker. Great move. Excellent move. Uh, we have um, the Imperial trainee of Aaron banking out Y and coming about uh, via a um, red maneuver to get flipped around. I think he's probably going to be out of range of that ion turret from Kessel now. Aaron aileron bumping into the TIE fighter, moving rocks like it's his job. And then... Uh, <laughs> he's really good at it, though, Tim. I'm sure our Judge Billy uh, with those glorious, glorious mutton chops is overseeing everything. Billy's mutton chops are vibrating at the moment. He's going, hmm. Oh, they know. They know we're talking about them. They know it. Okay, so that 
period. Very interesting move here with the sloop. Countdown trying to get in front of the TIE fighter. What a brilliant move. This is actually a bit of a double-edged sword, though, but because Countdown is now stressed, Countdown's pilot ability will not happen. That is an excellent point. Maybe the Academy pilot can get lucky and score some damage on my favorite ship on This board. may be the final Countdown. This could be the final Countdown, which we are not talking about uh, any existing or, uh, or pre-existing franchises. Yeah, no copyright infringement over here. No infringement happening here, folks. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Did I ever tell you that when I was actually in grade school, when I was a kid, uh, I am a percussionist. Oh, very nice. And one of the very first performances I ever did when I was a kid was our uh, grade school band went and played the final countdown at Canada's Wonderland in the, uh, in the band tent near where the Dragonfire roller coaster is. I love that ride, Tim. Followed swiftly by a day at Wonderland, of course, but... <laughs> Which just wins for everyone. It was actually probably one of my first ringtones when I had a cell phone. Back when you just got the several different tones. I used to love it. Hey, remember when the phone had a cord that went to the wall? That's insane. <laughs> I actually do remember that, Tim. Oh, Victor, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> rotary phone. I had a rotary phone in my house, and you hated people that had a zero in their phone number because it was like, z d d d d d d d four z d d d d d d d d d d d d Okay, so we got the K turn from Merrick Steele triggering it. I love the move from Kestel. Kestel just getting out of dodge on this one. I think he was considering the barrel roll, but much will depend on where Quick, Quick Draw decides to go here. Quick Draw might actually just two turn and finish off Kestel here. Steady hands Devin here again using uh, the beautiful, beautiful PTL uh, barrel roll template there to reposition. Just selfless, shame, selfish, shameless self promotion. There's no. Uh, no okay, we get a here, <laughs> two turn right from quick draw means he's staying right put, unless he fits in that intervening space she between might be the striker and the academy tire pilot. Ooh, well, leave Schreiber here is getting it out there, and they are going to see. It looks like he might. This is a big call because if if the quick draw uh, base plate does not fit between the striker and the Kai pilot, or so the tie fighter. Then Quick Draw doesn't move and he gets a shot on the TIE Fighter. But if he does fit, then he bumps the TIE and doesn't get a shot. Everybody clinch! They were clenched before you said anything. Oh, looks like he fits. Billy's getting Everyone in there. peering in for a closer look because this is a really important maneuver. It is not looking like he fits in there. Wow, that's clutch there, Jeff. That is really clutch and that probably spells trouble for the Academy pilot. Unless he rolls hot fire. Now, for the newer players, if you're ever going to an event, uh, whether it's a fun Sunday kit or if you're going to a store championship or if you're going to world championships, and you reveal a dial and you see that, you need to think to yourself of all the different capabil possibilities that could affect uh, the outcome of that shot um, based on movement. Oh, there's one. Nothing going through. So he will Dodge spend it. the focus token, and he dodges that dangerous shot at range one. So when you reveal your dial and you see something like what's just happened, most important thing call a judge. Call a judge because the judge will do the remover for you and he will determine whether or not you're getting a shot that turn. I mean, Quick Draw didn't do any damage there, but re relatively speaking, Quick Draw could have finished off that Academy tie in one shot. And that would have been a really big turning point in the game there, Tim. Looks like Aaron has forgot a uh, fire control system. Ooh, I think you are right. Devin a bit deciding. of a missed opportunity there. Looks like we're on to the next shot. One damage going through from Kessel onto Quick Draw. Ooh, quick, draw quick Draw is ionized. That's a big blow to Quick Draw right there. So right here now, step nine at the end of Kestrel's shot, you will see Quick Draw be able to return fire. It does look like you are right, Tim. He has forgotten his fire control system. Aaron cursing up into the just one crit. Oh, but he's oh, wearing it. It lands. Wearing the crit, going through. The dice gods keeping everything in balance here while we try to Looks like damaged engine. sideways at the crit card there, folks. Is that damaged engine? Bill. One more damage there from Countdown onto the Academy. Damage cockpit. It's damaged cockpit on the crit there on the Academy TIE Fire, which is... Incredibly relevant because he was already PS1. That's a big loss here in this uh, in this fight here, Tim. That's what we call a free one. That's uh, could be worse. Oh, three big hits! My goodness. 
Ooh. And that is not the result Devin wanted to see, folks. Devin's green dice continuing not to be really kind to him this game. So it looks like that Academy TIE pilot took like nine damage and just got killed three <laughs> times. Poor man. Well, All he wanted to do was be the valedictorian. <laughs> Aaron didn't like the way he was looking at him, so he eliminated him from this whole procedure. So at this point, we are one hour left in the match. Uh, Aaron's list is looking really good. Um, he's, he's got one shield missing from quick draw, which despite using the bonus attack, uh, didn't actually yield any net positive damage, but he killed the TIE Fighter anyway, so it's fine. Um, Interesting result here, Tim. I think we're going to see Kestel do a bank maneuver behind this rock to just put some distance between him and Quick Draw. Get another range to uh, Ion turret shot here. Devin has to be careful with this maneuver because if he's doing so, he might actually expose himself to that back arc there on the TIE SF. I will be very surprised if Kestel gets a shot this turn. Very surprised. I think that um, Quick Draw can probably do the one forward and then barrel. Oh, at least, yeah, one forward and then barrel roll. Barrel roll. Um, Maybe Kestel just do it. it it's Aaron, always uh, fun to speculate, folks. This is why we enjoy doing this. Aaron's got a great opportunity to get all three of his strikers on Kessel to finish him off. But you have to ask yourself, do I really want to commit all three of my ships to finishing off a one-health Kestel? Or do I want to try and preserve as much as I can and start positioning myself correctly for the late game against the X-7 Defender? Because one thing that Aaron has done magnificently here... It's not just get the damage in, but it's protect his list. He needs two to three guns on an X7 defender or a blocker to get damage through those tokens and that agility. Well, and he has just that remaining on the board here. I think you are right, Tim. I believe he will disengage here and try to form his, form his forces up again. It seems foolish to try to aggressively chase Kestrel at this point. I'm very surprised that Devin did barrel roll behind the rock. But, you know, at this point, if he does a one bank left, it'll set himself up beautifully for getting into the fight the following turn. I think Devin's contemplating the uh, three turn or the three bank left. I'm not entirely sure. But if he if he's smart with Kessel, he's going to try and get right out of dodge. Um, much will depend on the outcome of this turn, I think, Jeff. I think this is an important part here. It might be the... Uh, can't say the name of the actual... But it would be the turning... Turning point. My favorite sports network of mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got the uh, Academy Pilot dead, so Aaron's Imperial trainee moves first. Nice green three straight, get rid of that stress, take a focus. Because, of course, the strikers do not have the target lock action. That's correct. It's interesting to note here on the strikers that are stressed, they do not get to use their ailerons well under the influence of stress. So Countdown opting to retain his stress and just three bank and get out of there. Um, we're going to one bank aileron with the Black Scout, uh, which of course is not PS4, he's at PS5, um, which is why Countdown gets to move first, because uh, the Black Squadron Scout has uh, adaptability plus one up to PS5. But um, Interesting move here though, Tim. It looks like he wants to block quick draw to limit where he's moving so we can keep him in the fight for the following turn. I gotta say, it's a, it's a tactic that I've used myself plenty of times when I've got formation flying ships. If one of your ships gets uh, ionized, you put another ship right in front of it to reduce the amount of distance out of position that you are uh, suffering as a result of the ionization. Um, Aaron feeling here that he can handle a one forward from quick draw at this point. Um, I mean, Kessel hasn't moved so we don't know how close Kessel's going to be for that ion cannon turret shot. That looks like the... Oh. Looks like Aaron read Devin's mail again yeah. because the Black Squadron Scout now has, looks like a range three unobstructed shot on Kessel. Kessel could barrel roll out of range, but then he's really far out of position, and then, you know, those, those strikers are just going to trap him next turn anyway. I think you're right on this, though. I believe Quick Draw is just going to barrel roll right out of the action so he can't get ion again, and we're going to start this dance all over. Beautiful, folks. beautiful position for Merrick Steele here because he can just come at three or four different ways, and there's no way that Aaron can block all of Merrick's moves here. Um, Merrick probably going to get a range three obstructed shot on the Black Squadron Scout, maybe. 
but we'll see. There's the ionized one forward from Quick Draw. Just to clarify for our newer players, despite doing the one forward which you are forced, remember you do not reveal a uh, maneuver that dial. That is correct. Uh, you do still get an action. Uh, which is a really important reposition here that will take him right out of range two and right out of range of that really dangerous ion cannon turret. Yeah, I feel like Kestel's uh, ion cannon turret more than anything in this match has been getting Aaron to control space much more cautiously than he would either zoom in with those strikers. Strikers love uh, pit fighting. They love Absolutely. getting right in there. But if you zoom him right in there, Kessel's going to ionize you and you're way out of the fight. Well, it's not a bad ship in an ion matchup because as you saw, they do have the ailerons to reposition before they have to take that one forward from the ion. We're measuring the shot here from Kestel. It looks like it will be range two here on the Black Squadron. A couple of interesting um, uh, shots coming up here. We'll see who gets lucky. Devin rolls two hits with the use of that Predator EPT. Just in range two there, eh? No token. Lightweight frame is going to trigger, and... Oh, he dodges just it. Just dodges it. Unbelievable. Devin can't buy... Can't buy it to save can. his life right now. Aaron's greens have been on point all game, and it's... I, I'm sorry to say, it's pretty atypical of Aaron. <laughs> His greens usually betray him pretty badly in high-state games. Every, everything comes full circle in this game, Tim. You can never, never escape those dice gods. Billy getting in there to see if Merrick's got a range three obstructed on this uh, range three uh, Black Squadron's pilot here. Looks like he does. Saberwolf doing his part here and ensuring that this game continues smoothly and fairly. He's got no range to the uh, Black Squadron. No. No range on the trainee. There you go, folks. Finally, you get a shot of those glorious mutton chops we've been talking about this whole time. <laughs> just are. awe inspiring, and I would listen to whatever he says. They're just, they're, they're, they are, they are mint. They are magnificent. Okay, so we've got no arc on the Imperial trainee, and we're trying to see if we have range to the Black Squadron. That rock is causing a, f there's two rocks there, so it's trying to hard to see. You can't lay the template. Uh, flat, but remember for new players, the rule is if you can fit the range ruler between the two ships, it is out of range. That is correct. You need to have the range ruler being pushed up off of the bottom of the base plate for it to be in range. It looks like this might be in range. I think they're trying to judge whether it's obstructed or not. This will be a close call here, Tim. Yeah, this is a great reason why you always want to have a judge in high stake games. So it looks like it's Definitely. It's not oh, sliding. That's wow. going to be close. That is a millimeter if I've ever seen one there, Jeff. It is a. Everybody clinch! Clinch! Oh, it's in that range! That looks like it's on it. It's always fun to speculate while staring at the screen. <laughs> like we've said before, you really don't get a good uh, idea of the depth. Oh, Devin moved it. So that's the one thing. When, you, when you're, you're accidentally moving oh. it. Okay, so we're taking the shot at the Imperial trainee. Cleanly evaded. Cleanly evaded. Ironically enough, it's funny, Jeff, because we've got three men here, Aaron, Devin, and Billy, who are all judges. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, folks. But again, like what we were talking about earlier, it's just important to communicate with your opponent. Just make sure. If you ask them first and they agree, then you know everyone's on the same page, and it just avoids any unpleasant situations later down in the game. Well, people make fun of us for being Canadian and so like polite when we play X-Wing. What happened? And it looks like with that shot, Kestel destroyed with a direct hit. My goodness. I took one one look off the screen to go p grab a piece of jerky. I come back and Kestel's just like, you know, just gone. <laughs> just like the piece of meat you're chewing on right now. Which is salty and delicious, by the way. Which is probably how Devin is feeling right about at this point in the game. Salty and delicious, yeah. He is salty and delicious, yeah. Well, right after their two opponents uh, revealed their lists at the beginning of the night, I remember looking at it and saying, okay, this is going to be a fair match. You know, there's lots of really good things on both sides. Um, all the evades. Jesus. 
And that's why this match is not over by a long shot, folks. Merrick Steele is very, very viable. He can eliminate one of these really quickly, and then we have a much, much closer game. I just love how uh, Aaron was tilting so hard before this game started. He was like, oh, my list. Oh, Devin is, oh, oh, I'm going to lose. Looking pretty good for Aaron at this point there, Jeff. It's not looking so bad. We're I have seen Stranger Things, but this is definitely an uphill battle at this point. We're over the two-thirds of the way through the match mark at this point. Uh, the way that it is set up, um, Aaron would need to kill... Sorry, Devin, I should say, would need to kill all of Aaron's list. If he, um, if he leaves Quick Draw alive, he's got one point. Oh, it's one point. You are right. Doing some quick math, and it wasn't adding up, but Tim puts me in my place. You're going to see some fancy maneuvering here. It looks like that number three is probably going to aileron to the right and come around the rock. Well, interestingly enough, the Black Squadron Scout, number three, cannot aileron. I don't believe his aileron right will clear that rock. So if it does, then Aaron will probably two-turn come about, and then he'll go for the block with the trainee. But... I mean, that's, that, that's the ideal situation here. Uh, you two-turn quick draw to get him into range of Merrick. You block Merrick with one of the um, trainees, because, or, or one of the strikers, because, of course, a blocked defender X7 title does not get their free of aid. Uh, and he gets no actions either. And, and believe it or not, actions are good in X-Wing. Is that how this game works? I, I'm often confused sometimes by the finer details of it. Let's talk a little bit more about how this game works at the FAQ. <laughs> so here's one I don't understand. Rolling dice. Rolling dice is different from re-rolling dice. If an effect references rolling dice, it refers only to the first time a die is rolled, such as rolling dice during the roll attack dice step. If an effect references rolling dice... It refers only to the instance when dice that have already been rolled are rolled again, such as re-rolling dice during the modified dice step. Well, that red light is just about like the dictionary there, Tim. You want to break it down into some more layman's terms for uh, myself included? I don't know. <laughs> okay, excellent. If anybody who's watching this knows, <laughs> can post an <laughs> please, explanation. Please post it to us. FFG I, I, speaking in hieroglyphics on this one. Because I didn't quite understand what uh, what that clarification was needed for. Yeah, so they've added a couple of things to some of the uh, Force Awakened Damage Dex card as well. Um, so the blinded pilot, a ship with this card, uh, can still trigger gunner and feedback array, etc. Uh, they've added something to Kylo Ren's, I'll show you the, or I'll, I'll show you the dark side conditions card. It says, additionally, if this card was assigned from Kylo Ren crew, since the action still resolved, but there are no more pilot trait damage cards remaining, another action is not chosen. And I have seen that happen before, and it is absolutely crushing to think you have one in there, and sometimes you just can't keep track. It's true. They've added an errata to Dengar's ability, and when Dengar is attacked on the round that Biggs Darklighter's ability was used, uh, if Dengar chooses to use his ability, he attacks the ship that uh, just attacked him rather than Biggs. Uh, they've added an errata to Double Edge, which is another one of the named... Uh, tie aggressors. I like this pilot, Tim. What, what exactly did they change about him? Well, his pilot ability says once per round, after you perform a secondary weapon attack that does not hit, and keep in mind that the aggressors have the ability of uh, missiles and a turret, um, then does not hit, you may perform an attack with a different weapon. So they've changed it to say, when resolving the ability of Double Edge, the ship can choose to resolve an attack with either its primary weapon or an equipped turret or missile secondary weapon that it did not just perform an attack with. If a missile secondary weapon was not discarded due to munitions failsafe, for example, the ship cannot use its ability to attack again with that weapon. That's a really smart way you read the first version and like I'll put munitions failsafe on a on a, like a an ion pulse missile or something and like technically that. Technically it was a technically, second shot, right? Like yeah. Rules as intended versus rules as written, right? People will always find a way. Uh, they also had an errata to Lieutenant Kessel's ability, who we saw in the match today. Uh, Lieutenant Kessel's ability can be resolved during the modified defense des, uh, dice step after the defender rolls defense dice and before the defender Ooh, modifies them. Now, interesting result here. It looks like Aaron has clipped the rock. He will avoid damage here, but that's a, that is a slight error. You don't normally see that from him. He's so good at flying around this. Yeah, but I think, you know what, that, that's a millimeter, and it's not the end of the world either, especially if that striker was going for a, uh, a block. And 
for for, cry, for for Christ on a cracker's sake, he still didn't do any damage. No, His no, reds are missing when he needs them to, <laughs> and hitting when he needs them to. All right, we got uh, the Black Squadrons just coming in for the kill on Merrick Steel here. I'm hoping that Devin just did a two forward. It would surprise me if did if Devin did anything less than a three speed maneuver here. Just he wants the evade token. He understands there's going to be shots on him, but this is really. A best case scenario with the Imperial trainee hitting the rock there, so he can avoid at least one shot at least coming up. So we got a uh, countdown, doo -doo -doo -doo. finishing, doo -doo -doo -doo. finishing off his stress, getting rid of that, ready to come about next turn. And now the uh, moment of truth. We got a three straight from Merrick Steele. We're gonna see if that clears, because if it does, Devin's laughing. Everybody clinch! Oh, that, does oh, that not is a bump. Look like it. That is a bump. Okay, so <clears throat> good news is that uh, Devin is safe from both strikers, uh, but not safe from Quick Draw. Quick Draw can barrel roll here yeah, and possibly get out of the arc, arc, I think, yeah. But then yeah. Quick Draw's in a really tough spot to get around and engage Merrick the following turn uh, with that rock and lay. But, you know, Merrick, Merrick's 4K completely blocked at this point. I almost feel like um, Aaron's going to maybe want to shoot from this position just because that way if Merrick somehow does score damage on Quick Draw, Quick Draw will get that double tap. He did forget his fire control earlier. I'm willing to bet he won't make that mistake again. Aaron doesn't make many mistakes twice, I can tell you, having played against him a few times. He'll make a mistake once like any human, <laughs> but then he won't make it again. <laughs> okay, so we've got Quick Draw doing the barrel roll right and it looks like backwards as much as possible. Um... Aaron realizing he's got all the time in the world to just uh, close the net around Merrick Steele here. What an absolutely great hashtag make Imperial straight again uh, final we've had, eh, Jeff? I really think it'll be more balanced, especially with the changes that we saw. Uh, we're almost through all of them actually right here. Yeah, we've only got a couple more pages. Uh, let's see what Quick Draw does before we go in. I also want to get a chance to ask you about um, you know, your, your experience with the PTL so far. Uh, the league and, and what you've uh, said to some friends of yours and like try to get uh, has there been any uh, you know you as a champion uh, season uh, uh, eight champion have you had any instances where friends of yours have wanted to come out and play but they're worried that uh, it's it's not a, a casual environment and that everybody's super competitive or have you had people come out and really realize that regardless of your player skill level that you can actually get a proper game here. Actually, I've had both those situations come up, Tim. I've had both people be um, ask questions about intimidation, but once you explain and once they come out and they experience the atmosphere, really it's the community that you get here with the PTL that makes it so great. That's what keeps me coming back. It looks like this shot is evaded. But it, but it really, once they come and they, they play once or twice here at 401 or face-to-face, -face, they really um, they really see what, what brings uh, this community together. So we had Quick Draw doing one damage through uh, Merrick Steele's four defense dice there. How Merrick Steele rolled four defense dice and not one wiggly, I'll never know. Just a quick question there from uh, one of our players. Like Verifying that Merrick Steele did, in fact, lose a shield token earlier on in the game. choice here. It's frustrating, I guess, for Devin not getting a shot here, but it seems like the next turn will be an important one. He needs to start getting shots and whittling some of these ships down. Now, luckily in this finals match, it is two hours, not the standard 75 minutes, so we will have a bit of time to do that, but uh, if anyone can pull it off, it's uh, Devin Monkhouse. Yeah, I wouldn't give him too much credit at this point, though, Jeff. <laughs> Just trying to stay impartial while I seriously root for every <laughs> ship on the board at the same time. I am so happy to see Imperials back where they belong, playing Jank live for everyone to enjoy. I mean, I got to say, I, 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 I'm trying to stay impartial as well. I, I would love to see either of these guys named up on the winner uh, bracket on the trophy. Our, our trophy, of course, which is enormous. It's an enormous trophy. It is trophy. spectacular. <laughs> Absolutely every bit of it. Is earned. If not, it could be a little bigger. <laughs> I don't know if it's possible for it to be any bigger. That's also what she said. Uh -huh. But the point is, is that um, the uh, the two names here is Aaron, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. I knocked him out in a semifinal in season six, I believe. Um, Devin's been up there as well, so both of these guys deserve to be on it. 
and uh, and they certainly brought the uh, prototype Toronto League themed lists for the final here. It's just been all about piloting ability and uh, positioning and a little bit of luck, which is the game of X-Wing. Which is how it goes, right? Now, not to take away, Aaron is flying an exceptional match here. Seems to have Devin's number on a lot of these moves. Well, let's continue some of the, the, uh, the nerf gate challenge uh, things. We got one uh, errata to uh, a piece we mentioned at the beginning of the cast tonight, Sunny Bounder. Sunny Bounder's ability can trigger after re-rolling any number of dice, including zero dice. For example, if an effect allowed Sunny Bounder to re-roll any number of dice, such as spending a target lock, and zero dice were re-rolled, Sunny may add one matching result. Amazing. Uh, that's about it to uh, pilots. Then we've got some changes to some of the upgrade cards. Uh, so the Boba Fett crew card now has one, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs of, of FAQ clarification. <laughs> Every bit of it well earned, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's quite the small novel there that's starting to creep up in this uh, fact there. If Boba Fett is used to discard a card that is referenced by name or other card, such as a score to settle or the ghost title, the corresponding card can no longer reference the other ship properly. So a debt to pay would become uh, null and void, or the phantom title for the double turret tap would be... And that's uh, kind of an important change. I think it was ruled the other way originally. So now this is just sort of uh, clarifying that, yes, in fact, you might see uh, more play from Boba Fett because of this. Well, our sitting Canadian national champion, Mr. Bohan, I'm going to say it's Lai. It may be Lee. I'm, I'm going to say it's Lai because I think it's L-I. Bohan the champ. Bohan the champ. Uh, flew Kane and Biggs into the Canadian national uh, final, uh, thoroughly throuncing all of the Americans that try to come up to, uh, to poach our trophy. So we're very happy with the result. Uh, Kane and Biggs is now about as dead as a doornail. That is, uh, that's true there. It's, it's not quite has the same punch as it used to. Interesting note, though, in the top cut at the Canadian Nationals, there was a Kanan Lorick that actually did quite quite well, and you might see some more of those. I think Kanan Lorick's great. I love Ray and Lorick. And then you put Kanan Jarrus, the crew, on Lorick so that Ray can take Lando. That's, uh, that's kind of an interesting combination, actually. I Love might have it. to try that out someday. Okay, so it looks like we've got the one forward aileron going to impact that rock. I'd be shocked if it doesn't. Let's get rid of the model to make sure. Billy's going to do their remover just to make sure that we're being all fair and balanced here. Definitely impacting that rock. And Ray Donovan is right above the action just to make sure that this move is completely legal. So what we're checking here is to see if the one forward actually clears the base plate of the defender. If it doesn't, then the striker doesn't move. So indeed, the back left corner of the striker does not clear the base plate, and the striker does not impact the rock. What a brilliant call by Aaron. Just another huge piloting call by uh, by Dave Grohl there. I mean Aaron. So. By Dave Grohl. Dave the myth, the Grohl himself. Uh, one really interesting errata just before I wrap up before combat starts was the one to advanced targeting computer. Did you read this one? No, I didn't read this one. What was, what was the change they made to this rule? It's for all our Vader quick draw pilots out this there. This is myself included, so I'm quite interested. <clears throat> a TIE advanced equipped with advanced targeting computer needs to have a target lock on the defender in order to use the ability. The TIE advanced cannot use a target lock on the defender from a friendly ship equipped with targeting synchronizer for this requirement, nor can it spend the target lock if it uses the ability of advanced targeting computer. Interesting ruling. I just recently got absolutely wrecked by a targeting synchronizer list, and that is an interesting interaction that I've made there with Vader and with the advanced targeting computer. My goodness, I cannot believe that 4K fit. They're just adjusting it. I mean, it fits a lot easier when Devin moves the ships and the rocks around, but <laughs> I can't even call judge because the, <laughs> no. the judge is right there. The judge is there, <laughs> staring intently in his gorgeous Argyle sweater. Evan opting or uh, Devin opting for the target lock on quick draw here. Not a terrible move, I don't think, uh, especially considering you know you're gonna want that target lock for a later turn when you do get into that range one ban, but. Uh, Aaron doing the three sloop, not the three bank. Interesting call. I think Opting for a pattern analyzer um, move here. Pattern analyzer, of course, being the next card that I'll talk about uh, during the next uh, lull has, phase here. 
Okay, he has not forgotten his trigger. There he goes, just putting it down afterwards. Definitely declaring an action before it. So pattern analyzer for a focus. Not a bad call. Not a bad call. You're at range three. You're gonna want that. You want a shot still. All right, you want to get that FCS established at range three, which is safest there. So quick draw taking one hit. Um, FCS roll for two. Merrick, ooh, having to choose whether or not to lose a shield here or spend your evade. Looks like he's taking the one damage. Merrick got a range three unobstructed shot back at quick draw just for a hot garbage. And, oh, there you go. There he goes. So now, depending on the roll, we might be able to see his ability finally trigger. Target lock uh, working its magic here. Oh, and my. there we go. Three damage lands on quick draw. A huge yell of satisfaction from Devin. We're going to get to see Merrick uh, Steele's pilot ability used. So three criticals are drawn, and Devin gets to choose. Devin chooses major explosion. Of course, that's the best thing, because regardless or not, you're now increasing the amount of damage. Aaron sparing Aaron himself the uh, sparing himself the major explosion. But if I there. may say so, Tim, my heart rate just doubled because in the previous game, as previously mentioned, the major explosion landed, resulting in the direct hit, killing Quick Draw in one round. Or as we call it, the dream. The dream, folks. It's the dream. <laughs> or the nightmare. <laughs> oh, this is the Quick Draw's tap. return Back. shot. Looks like one damage going through. No zero. He has cleanly the, evaded. Has the evade token to avoid. My goodness, this game just turned on its turvy a little bit, didn't it? It'll be interesting here. Merrick could be in a spot of trouble. Quick draw most likely will make a one bank. Well, I mean, look, uh, Devin can't. Sorry, Aaron can't get any of his strikers in a blocking position this turn. Um, Merrick moves before quick draw. So, I mean, Aaron could fake going in with quick draw and just bail the other direction. Um, be an interesting choice because to his left there is still Countdown coming in with two holds, still ticking away, cannot be killed regardless of how much damage Merrick Steele rolls against him. Sure, Devin really needs to clear a ship of Aaron's this turn to get back in this game. He's got damage through on every ship in the list, no points on the board, 35 minutes left. Uh, Devin's not completely out of this game. But he's got no shields on Merrick Steel. He needs to do some damage. He needs to do damage quick. He absolutely does. As you can see, quick draw. Aaron P. not forgetting to use the fire control system here. Really sets up a dangerous shot on this next encounter, regardless that he does not have his ability to trigger. So a little bit more on Nerfgate here. Um, one of my own personal favorite interactions was the errata clarification to uh, the Zero Point Scum crew that came out on the Ciroc Cruiser, Chitakro Visago. Ooh, well said. Some of the things that uh, some of the things that uh, some of us cheeky guys were doing were putting a cloaking device on a hawk, <laughs> equipping the hawk with a zero point Chitakro, You cloak the hawk, and then you swap out the cloaking device for another two or one point illicit remaining cloaked. I love every bit of that interaction, Tim. I think <laughs> I think that's just brilliant. Whoever came up with because that. a cloaked Torkel <laughs> or a cloaked Pelob is a pain in the zip. That is a pain in the rear end. Just so, just to clarify, with the new FAQ rules here. When an upgrade card is replaced with another upgrade card of the same type, the new upgrade card needs to obey any restrictions for deployment. For example, scum only or small ship only. But if Chitakra Visagro is used to replace a cloaking device, the effect of the text of cloaking device stops. So you no longer have to roll to see if the cloaking device breaks. Amazing. And uh, if the ship has a cloak token, that token is not discarded because all you all the cloaking device does is allow you to, as an action, take a cloak token. And then you spend that cloak token to decloak if you choose. And that is just an awesome interaction. Another brilliant, brilliant workaround that somebody has come up with. And really, I think it's it's just wonderful. I would absolutely love to fly against something like that. Clarification to cluster mines. When a ship is uh, instructed to place cluster mines, such as by minefield mapper, the tokens are placed in the arrangement described on cluster mine bomb reference card, not one here, one there, one there. Uh, right. I have no idea why that needed clarification, but again, thank you very much for it. Some people are Muppets. <laughs> Some people will bend whatever they can, I guess. Dead man switch. Last one before we get back into combat here. Uh, if a ship with dead man switch, I love this, flees the battlefield... Dead man switch ability resolves before the ship is removed, but is measuring only from the portion of the ship that is inside the play area. If the entirety of the ship is outside the play area, the ability 
does not affect other ships. Interesting. That one is quite interesting. So I like Dead Man's Switch now on something like uh, a Wild Space Fringer with uh, with uh, smuggling compartment. Because if you just if you're ready to die, you can just go out there and take somebody with you. <laughs> Tug him towards the edge of the board and then fly off, doing the automatic damage with Dead Man's Switch. Merrick Steele doing the three bank, coming in here. Looks. See, this isn't the target priority that I personally would have chosen because you you might be able to put one damage through on Countdown, but Countdown's chucking it right back at you. That is true. Now, if there's any ship that can tank it, that would be the Defender folks, but hopefully it looks like, uh, and this is another brilliant move on Devin. This is why this game is never over. Devin anticipating the one bank and blocking it perfectly. Aaron, Aaron anticipating the one bank. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, if you if you if you don't want to get shot at, then don't get shot at. That's that's is really is the best defense, right? Another one of these interesting crucial moments here is whether or not Quick Draw's base plate fits between Countdown and Merrick, because if it does not, then Quick Draw will be taking that's, range one fire. That's big. So we've got all three players trying to get in there. Uh, Billy, of course, with his finger firmly on the one bank template to make sure that uh, things. So the rules state. When you impact a ship, you put the ship at the end of the maneuver template at, as uh, where the impact happens and work your way backwards, prioritizing the rear guides. I understand. Okay. Just in case there's any discrepancies, and then you have definitely a point of reference of which you can make a fair and impartial decision. Yeah, so you want to make sure that where the ship impacts clears uh, around, like the rear guides clear around the striker, because if it doesn't fit, then you've got to take it back to where the ship impacts the uh, the striker. On Vassal, it's very easy. You just hit the, the, the C on the keyboard, and the, the system does it for you. That is quite useful. In real life, that would be very helpful. Now, I myself haven't started playing on Vassal yet, and I look forward to frustrating many an opponent while I struggle my way through its commands. I, I don't doubt it, Jeff. <laughs> okay, so we've got range one from Merrick just rolling hot garbage on Countdown. Focusing for two, surprising choice. I don't know if I would have agreed. You really need that defensive token to stay alive at this point. Countdown. Oh, we'll going to focus and take nothing so that he's not stressed. Oh, juked. Oh, juked it. That's, that's Now Aaron has a choice to make. Does he does he take two damage or does he use his pilot ability? Yep, I he's going to he use it. he his pilot ability, absolutely, and he keeps that focus token for the offense. Yeah. Merrick is unfortunately quite exposed now with just the evade token for defense. He's going to have a four-die modded shot from Countdown coming up here. This could be the game, ladies and gentlemen. No, no. two crits. Cleanly and evaded. Cleanly evaded by Merrick. And then we've got, looks like a range two or three coming from uh, the Black Squadron Scout. Merrick still has that uh, lovely evade token. Hot garbage from the scout. Two there, and oh, oh. that's Natty's. Natty's. Natty's, folks. 28 minutes remaining. There is plenty of time now. We have a match. We countdown sure do. on one hull, so he is now the final countdown. He is. <laughs> da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. Victor playing spoiler here, not letting us play our music, but we still love him all the same. He's no spoiler. You know, VWTV Live does so much for our community. The last thing we want is some horrible accusation of them putting some sort of content. I just don't want your beautiful voices to be muted by the, uh, the auto uh, silence. I love it. I love it. So, so I also love Merrick's 4K here because he's going to get uh, he's going to get to finish off Quick Draw if Quick Draw doesn't bail. Uh, he's going to probably get a shot on at least one of the other strikers. And it looks to me like the Black Squadron Scout could probably well, he can't make it to range one of Merrick. So then you're shooting at a defender at something other than range one, so you might as well just, you know, laugh. Getting those ship markers ready, because this is a bit of a cluster F right here in the middle of the board. Let's go back to the last bits of the nerfs. Uh, we got one really important one to uh, the Dark Emperor of the Sith, Mr. Emperor Palpatine. See, yeah, now I like this interaction. What, what exactly has changed about him, Tim? Well, our, our actually, Devin, who's playing right now, was the, the Marshal at Canadian Nationals, and he ruled the interaction of this card as, FA, as FFG ultimately did which makes the most sense. It says that, so after a ship rolls defense dice and before it resolves the effect of lightweight frame to roll an additional defense dice, Palpatine can be used on 
the separate additional defense die. But please note that if Palpatine is used for the initial roll, he cannot affect the separate additional defense roll. So you have to nominate Palpatine separately for your lightweight frame rolls now. I kind of like the way that triggers, though, because you're able to roll the first two and then decide whether or not it's needed as the situation dictates. Yeah, or if you have range three or an obstruction and you don't roll frames, you're just going to call Palp anyway. So it means that, once again, with the original mount nerf to Palpatine, you've got to think more cautiously and more thoroughly about how you're using that eight-point crew. Uh, guidance chips, I, I, lo <laughs> this, I love this. This is an this. interesting one. I, I love this. I, I do love that they had to clarify it. I love it because now it gives you a double-edged sword against harpoon torpedoes, Absolutely. right, or harpoon missiles. So if a ship with a primary weapon value of three or higher uses the effects of guidance ships, it has the option to change one die result to a crit result. It cannot instead choose to change one die result to a hit result. So you've got to go all the way to crit if you've got uh, a, a, a primary weapon value of three or more. Um, I'm sure Billy's... Uh, seen what we've seen there and uh, nope we're fine so uh, we've got the striker there uh, we've got the uh, black moon squadrons uh, doing the three straight to clear stress Aaron trying to get as many arcs as possible on Merrick Steel um, Merrick oh yeah countdown moves before Merrick of course it's like playing Operation, folks. No one really wants to touch the side Don't here. touch the sides here. Bzzzt. Don't touch the side. <laughs> yeah. Aaron's getting in there, too. He's got the shaky hands. Bzzzt. Both of these guys have played many times against each other. I don't think either of them uh, take any of this personally. The other three uh, erratas on this last page, so they've clarified you can feedback array if you have blinded pilot or if you're, uh, if you're bumped into somebody. Uh, Gunner and the IG-88B crew interaction do work. What a brutal interaction that is. Where you can have, if you've got IGB crew on one guy and Gunner, you shoot, miss, you get to resolve both attacks. You're basically getting two, three attacks for the price of two. <laughs> I learned that lesson the hard way. Hotshot co-pilot being clarified about what counts as attacker and defender uh, and having to spend that focus token. Um, and then, yeah, um, Job of the Hut crew getting clarified as well. Any ship that has an illicit token may use it as described on the Jab of the Hut card. That ship may discard an illicit token from a card instead of discarding the card. The illicit tokens can be spent for their effect, even if the ship with Jab of the Hut equipped is destroyed. So Countdown looking like he's just trying to get through this little uh, cluster duck in the middle of the board here. It seems like he did. He, did. he just got out of dodge right there. Not a terrible idea. I mean, Aaron's got the ability now to exchange ships in and down. I mean, he's got. Um, I mean, if he were to if he were to win this match, a hundred nothing, he wouldn't just have a PTL final title. He'd also have bragging rights. And those are sometimes just as important. What was the score in your game that you won last year? Uh, I'm not sure. It was pretty close there at the end. Well, well. I'm pretty sure match. Kelvin got the Y wing. <laughs> Kelvin Kelvin did get the Y wing. It, it but Cavill lived way longer than I would have anticipated normally. I, I'm taking full credit for your win last year. You know that, right? Because I lent you that rig cargo shoot. 100%. Now, I did have my friend show up about 15 minutes into the match with the rig cargo shoot I forgot, which would have made it absolutely not playable. <laughs> so I do appreciate that, Tim. It's Devin a... seeming a little bit unhappy about what has gone on here. Uh, I don't know why. Merrick still hasn't revealed. Countdown considering an action. Looks like he's going to try and barrel roll to avoid Merrick's arc. I think that's probably well played by Aaron because I think a 4K arc might not get um, what Aaron needs here. It's important to note, Aaron doesn't have to rush into anything. He doesn't have to be overly aggressive. He is winning on points. Time is in his favor. It's really up to Devin to push the envelope, push the limit, as it were. Oh, zing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, to try to make this, pull this match out. Uh, he definitely has time, but like you said, he needs to destroy something on this engagement. Okay, so we're marking ships to get some tokens out of there. We're going to take the 4K template. Looks like Devin's almost definitely going to have range 2 on the Imperial Trainee, who, of course, barrel rolled and has no token. Sorry, he has the focus token. Countdown has no token. My mistake. My mistake. So Juke playing a big part here on this shot. I would definitely take a focus uh, defensively here and try and finish off Countdown. I 
mean, Quick Draw hasn't moved, but you can finish off Countdown. You can finish off Quick Draw. I mean, Devin probably won't survive this turn, but... But um, stranger things have happened. Stranger folks. things have happened. We didn't get a chance to clarify all of the uh, the Nerfgate cards, but if anybody wants, there's a link to the uh, most recent FAQ on the PTL um, players group page on Facebook. So feel free to mosey on over there and get a look at all of the different changes to the errata. Um, Minefield Mapper M9 G8. I really love what they've done the Pattern Analyzer and Pulse Ray Shield as well. Um, we're going to get into combat in a quick second here, uh, Jeff, and we're going to probably see the... Uh, see what happens in this game. So quick draw first, range three with a focus token and FCS. Aaron, considering re-rolling or spending the focus here. Ooh, interesting. That might change the target priority and he's wise in keeping it. Yeah. Beautiful re-roll there. Three strong hits. Devin having to consider a token or just take one damage. I would probably take the damage at this point. Yeah. I spend my evade, I lose my juke. One damage is not going to make or break him at this point. Not when he's this close. He's Spending spend the, focus. the focus. Okay. Spending the focus okay. for no damage. And then we've got Merrick shot. He's still got Juke active. Who is he going to choose? Range one to the striker. Looks like Devin's made his choice. He's going range one on the Imperial trainee. For red hot fire, three Ooh, shots. There we go. We got three green dice coming up from the trainee here. One of eight. Lightweight frame getting juked. So two damage going through the trainee. Aaron must roll a natty evade uh, to. Oh, he's got the focus tokens. Yeah, so he's, he's fine. He's going to survive this. We're going to see. Depending on what the critical oh, that's result true. is. That's true. Merrick's crit too. Oh. Merrick Steele getting his critical. So Aaron has to spend the focus token to survive. Uh, and Merrick's looking like he's going to get his beautiful Imperial um, ability here. So, so we got the one crit going three. through. Does the one damage. It is a critical. They will deal three cards. They should deal three cards. I think uh, Devin may have forgotten Merrick's pilot ability, but it wouldn't matter anyway because that I would choose that one too. <laughs> It was Blinded Pilot, yes. No, it was definitely Blinded Pilot. Yeah. Billy, Blinded Pilot, right? 100%. Yeah, even if you did draw three cards, you're just... You know. The direct hit would have also been useful in that situation, but Blinded Pilot is not a bad silver medal. And Merrick Steele's ability is usually, uh, I believe it's a may or, is it a may or a must? It is a may. It is a may. Is okay. it actually? No, I've said that. Now immediately I regret my choice of words. No, it's not a may, it's a must. I believe it All is All it a means must. is that two of the top cards of uh, Devin's deck are supposed to be discarded. So um, we'll just remind Billy to uh, to discard the top two cards off of, uh, off of um, Aaron's uh, damage deck. Yeah. Uh, Victor, would you mind going and telling uh, Billy to make sure that the top two cards of Aaron's damage deck have to be discarded because Merrick's ability is a must? It says when your attack deals with a face-up damage card, instead do this. So it's a must. So it's a must, yeah. folks. I mean, I would have chosen Blind and Pilot anyway as well, but um, it's okay. All we can do is the uh, observers, like anybody observing a game of X-Wing, is inform the judge, and the judge makes a decision before talking to the players. So, uh, it gives me a chance to finish Nerfgate, which Absolutely. is great. Absolutely, this has been a lovely Nerfgate. It, it really brings me a lot of joy, the more you read. Minefield Mapper. Uh, when Minefield Mapper is used, the player chooses a number of equipped bomb upgrade cards to discard. Each upgrade card can only be chosen once. So if a ship equipped with extra munitions uses Minefield Mapper to discard cards, it can choose to discard the Ordnance token instead of discarding the card, but cannot choose to discard that card again. Uh, next is M9G8, a very fa a favorite droid among Rebel players. So a ship equipped with M9G8 treats friendly ships as enemy ships when it acquires target locks. For example, a ship with M9G8 and Body Rook uh, equipped can equip a target lock on any friendly ship 
within range. So Body Rook and MIG would stack, whereas before they wouldn't because Body Rook was only for uh, uh, enemy ships. Now, as an Imperial player, I really like the interaction with that droid because I uh, used to fly Vessary a lot, and you could get a lot of rerolls off their own target lock. You love it. Yeah, I do love it. Just to clarify what happened earlier, uh, Merrick Steel did use his ability there drawing three cards. They just did it off camera, and Blinded Pilot was the one chosen. Wonderful. Okay, great. Uh, I'll finish these two real quick, because these are really good uh, erratas before we get into um, the combat phase. I'm pretty sure we're going to have uh, movement and activation. So, Pulsed Ratio. Uh, actually, the former Canadian national champion, the hare himself, Alan Funk. The hare himself. Took a list to this year's Canadian nationals, utilizing Pulsed Ratio before it was nerfed. So, before it was nerfed, if you had full shields you could still pulse ray shield, take an ion token so that your seek fighters could do a one straight, which was great for range controlling when you're behind bombers. Um, the pulse ray shield has been errated to say that uh, a ship can only pay the cost to use this ability uh, if it can recover a shield. So if you're full shield, you can't pulse ray shield. Another smart change. You and I were talking about pattern analyzer before. So before, if you did a green maneuver through an asteroid cloud, sorry, a debris cloud, then your pattern analyzer would clear the stress from that uh, play. Some people thought it did, some people thought it didn't. The pattern analyzer card has been uh, clarified to say that when a ship activates during the activation phase and uses pattern analyzer, the check pilot stress and cleanup stress steps, I should say, which are both part of the execute the maneuver phase, occur after the perform action step. So abilities that trigger after a ship execute a maneuver still occur after the cleanup step. Uh, so all they're clarifying is that the cleanup step comes with the check pilot stress step. If a ship using pattern analyzer uh, then overlaps a debris cloud, the ship moves, resolves the perform action step, rolls for damage, and then resolves the check pilot stress step, then receives one stress token from the debris cloud. So, no more uh, Mike Reverso doing his triple T-70 X-Wing <laughs> flying through the debris clouds like his, his job anymore. I personally take a lot of joy in the public call-out. So before this happened, I actually had a situation where John Han Solo himself flew Nyan Yum against me, and he did this. Are you ready? I'm ready for this. So he... Talon rolls through a debris cloud. Okay. Then he pattern analyzer for a boost and pushed the limit for a focus. So he should have taken three stress tokens. Yes. But he still didn't because it was Nyan Yum. And he ended in range one in arc. That is just a filthy interaction, which I'd like to applaud. John Han Solo himself? John Han. What a John great player. On. John yeah. Han. What a great guy. R5P9 clarified similarly to pulse ray shield can only pay the cost to use the ability uh, if it can recover. Uh, your tie striker, sorry, your tie uh, SFs have had a clarification to their title, which was understood by more seasoned players, but uh, at this point has been um, clarified. What a move by Aaron there with the striker, eh? That one turn to maintain arc on Merrick, no matter where Merrick goes. He's really showcasing their maneuverability in this matchup. He used the uh, Imperial Trainee number four on your screen there to set up a beautiful block if uh, Devin tries to do any three-speed, four-speed maneuver. And then that Black Moon Swadger is going to be right behind him. Quick Draw is going to be right in front of him. And Devin went for the 4K. Oh, dearie, dear. He... That's way too close to that call. That is really without, close. Way too close to call without moving that trainee there. What a remarkable call if this fits, though. I'd be taking that defender off of its top, but that's me. They're just they're just going to give each other a little kiss here. Just a little Eskimo right on the nose. It looks like this move actually fit. I am nothing but impressed. We might see a one-bank bump. It doesn't happen often, Jeff, but I'm speechless. And quick draw bumps into the back of Merrick. What a phenomenal what? move by Devin. Jeez Louise. I would applaud if it would not totally throw over the sound on this microphone, Tim. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm speechless. What a, what a brilliant move there. And it looks like I believe he has evaded all of the arcs except for the Imperial training in front of him. Merrick shooting range one. Just Focus rolls. token to... Uh, Hot fire. Juking four damage. 
and the Imperial trainee is destroyed. First ship off the map for uh, no Aaron for there. The Black Squadron. Looks like uh, Countdown might have a range three here. So that'll be three unmodded against four with a full oh, countdown that's, hero. That's how this game goes. Oh, it, will. it gets through. Unbelievable. And the crit is... Direct hit. Direct hit. Unreal. Countdown scoring a really, really decisive blow. Putting Merrick Steele on notice. Aaron continuing to roll red hot fire with no tokens. My goodness. It is interesting to note with about 11 and a half minutes left, Aaron does have three ships, all, all still sitting on two hull, one hull each. This could still turn very quickly, this next phase. See, here, Aaron has to find a way to block Merrick's 4K turn with the Black Squadron Scout and try and finish Merrick off with Quick Draw. Because if Merrick turns around, he'll probably survive Quick Draw's shot with three agility, a focus, and evade. And then Merrick will kill Quick Draw. It's interesting to say, I think here he can aileron forward, do the one hard turn to the left, and use his barrel roll to position, blocking that 4K. That, that must be what Aaron's thinking here, uh, trying to get the kill shot from Quick Draw the rear of Merrick Steel. I don't know if Aaron, if Devin's done the math at this point, but just to remind all of our viewers, the way that Aaron has uh, point costed his ships means that with one ship left, Devin's Merrick Steel cannot afford to let any ship stand. If Aaron has one ship left, um, Aaron will win on points. The exception also being in this scenario, if he is able to destroy Quick Draw and eliminate one of the other strikers, he it's very true, and then it really would be the final countdown. And then that would be it? the final countdown, <laughs> and I will applaud on this stream. So Aaron is thinking long and hard about what to do with this striker. Um, I'll finish off the last couple of erratas. So the, t the nerf to one of the cards we have in play, the Special Ops Training title, says, In the proper sequence of events when using this card is as follows. If the ship attacks with its primary weapon from its primary firing tart without the front, it can choose to roll an additional attack die. If it does not roll an additional attack die, it may perform an additional uh, attack from its auxiliary firing arm. Therefore, if a ship begins by attacking with its primary weapon from its auxiliary firing arc, it cannot use the effect of special ops training. So as a lot of us know, you have to shoot forward first. Why is that an important interaction to clarify, Jeff? Well, especially if you're using a, one of the SFs like Backdraft, even Quick Dry himself, um, you have to, f <laughs> being able to choose which way you fire and which way you can control leaving your target lock with the fire control system is a huge advantage. So this just really clarifies which target has to be your priority. And as the SF player, you just have to plan a little bit further ahead. Absolutely. Um, another clarification here. Let's see if Aaron actually managed to guess where uh, Merrick's going to want to go here. Interesting. So he didn't go for the block. He's going for the kill. He's got the 2K That is flip. not a bad call. But that does leave him tokenless for some unmodified shots. Not a great choice against a tokened up defender. I think Devin played the smart, the safe game and went three bank to his right. But that's just me. We're going to see where he went in a very quick second here. He doesn't look too eager to reveal. He is showing the 4K, showing folks. showing the 4K. Oh Don't my fix goodness. what is not broken. Ooh, that is not ideal. I think uh, I think Countdown even still has a three obstructed shot on Merrick here. But that is not bad for the defender. It's going to get the face off at once with quick draw. It's going to take an unmodifiable shot from the Black Squadron and hopefully survive, weather the storm. We oh. are <laughs> Quick draw did a four straight. That's a bump. So interesting interaction. It looks okay. like he's sliding in. So yeah, he, he slid his ship in. Uh, any opportunity he had to look to see if its bump is gone because in that situation, folks, you ask your opponent, put your finger on your other ship and let's see if this bumps. But quick, quick draw's bumped here. Um, it's an interesting interaction, considering they were touching last turn. If they both do a four, it could be arguable that they are no longer bumping. 
I think Merrick has to be going in the same direction as well, though. Right? It has, it's... it's interesting. Well, either way, whatever happens, we have our, our judge here. I already know. I already used this one, but I'm a big fan of Lee Schreiber. We have Sabretooth here passing judgment on what just happened. Both of them are staring intently. This is an important call. Billy, if they both did the same speed maneuver touching last turn, are they touching still? Just while they're trying to find out, folks, I'll just keep talking because that's all I'm good for. <laughs> Interesting interaction. 637. 637. 637. This is a big move, folks, because as the time counts down, Victor is going to run over. I just uh, pause it right now while they make a ruling, just because it's so close on time. We want to make sure and give both these uh, pilots all the time that they can to finish this just thrilling game. I really, with the way that started, Tim, I did not... Well, I was not expecting it to go as long as it has, and I am very happy that I've been able to sit here with you for this entire time. Me too, Jeff. Thanks again for casting with me, mate. Uh, no problem. We're going just... to get Bill check out the uh, the FAQ ruling on whether or not the ships are touching. Um, and it give me a chance to finish off the last couple of FAQs here. we got one left for an interesting uh, Imperial Ace combo, the Targeting Synchronizer 3-point tech slot upgrade, which a lot of people have been using in conjunction with uh, Cruise Missile. The parallel, they're not touching. So the two ships have executed uh, a maneuver for the second turn in a row where they were touching and they were adjacent and parallel. And now they are no longer, uh, they are no longer touching. So quick draw shooting range one uh, with a focus target lock on Merrick Steele. Just rolling far absolute hot charge. Hot fire. Aaron just laughing maniacally, and that's the game. And first. that's a good game, but well, what an amazing finish to such a great game. Thank I'm, you. On behalf of Tim. Well, you know what? We're just going to take a quick second. Uh, I'll finish off targeting Synchronizer because that's last one out. So, folks, just remember uh, you cannot use targeting Synchronizer uh, with advanced targeting computer, but you can use it for attack target lock missiles as well as um, attack, uh, spending target locks as a uh, regular thing. Thank you very much, Billy. Billy's going to give us the uh, the FAQ uh, rolling uh, so I can read it out to everybody to understand exactly what happened at the end of our match there. Overlapping inline ships. Sometimes a round will end with two ships touching each other, parallel and facing the same direction. After both ships execute a maneuver of the same speed or perform the same boost or barrel roll action, so in this case they both did a four, they are no longer touching, even if their bases are still in physical contact unless they overlapped. And this is how they ruled this situation, and it ended up being a win for Aaron. And let me be the first to congratulate our new Season 9 champion, Aaron P. the boss. Aaron P., our former league boss, Dave Grohl himself, stand-up gentleman, folks. Big thank you again to VWTV Live, Victor, and uh, Travis streaming our matches, and to all our PTL Season 9. Welcome aboard, sports fans. We're here for the post-game. Uh, we wanted to add a little bit of an uh, interview aspect to this uh, Season 9 PTL final and in interview with our two finalists, Aaron and Devin. Thank you guys for joining me. Exciting. Thank you guys boss for battle. Yeah, it was the boss boss battle. Thank you guys very much for putting on such a spectacular show. I know that you guys thought it was uh, a bit slow to draw out because it almost got to the full two-hour uh, mark, but I got to say from Jeff's and my position, it was just a treat to watch. Um, I only have a couple of questions for you, but I wanted to start by saying, is there anything that you guys wanted to say to each other after the game? Aaron, great game, Devin. thanks so much for the game, man. That was great. I mean, Aaron, you're responsible for myself uh, getting brought into this community in a big way. You handed off um, the league boss title to, to Devin two seasons ago, but before that you were doing it all. Um, so thank you for helping pioneer a lot of the X-Men community in Toronto, mate, and, and Devin for, for taking what Aaron gave in you and, and really helping it get to that next level in terms of uh, player base and, and some uh, some you know modern uh, tools and stuff like that. And you've got that new Season 10 um, aspect, some rules. Did you want to clarify I'm some of those? very excited for Season 10. Yeah? Season 10, we're dropping a lot of the ship bonuses. Uh, we've gone through a lot of the, uh, the underplayed ships. So this season, we're doing original trilogy tournament. You get a bonus for playing... Uh, 
we had this last season, but if you play an original trilogy match, so ships only from the original trilogy, you get a bonus point. Both players get a bonus point. Um, and that's just the chassis, right? Just the chassis, yeah. So you can fly all crew, you can fly all YTs, you can't fly double YT, uh, or double named YT, you can't. You can fly two outer rim smugglers. And that's YT 1300. You can't fly the. You can't ro- you, look, listen. Original trilogy. Original trilogy does not mean the remastered stuff that came out in the 90s. That's, that's what true. I saw when I was a kid, but. Dash Rendar wasn't the guy flying out of Moss Eisley. That was just like some random dude. Like that's if you want to fly uh, the the generic. I mean, come and fight me. But uh, no, you can't fly a YT twenty four hundred. I agree completely. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about the game that just finished real quickly. Uh, first question for you both: um, Would you have done anything differently? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know you would have. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm start lost. With, let's start with Aaron really quick, Aaron. Uh, based on the way you floated, did you feel that you was there a point in the match when you felt things weren't going your way, or did you feel in control the whole game? It helped shed some light on that. So I was scared out of my damn mind the whole game. Like, it was just sheer terror. Uh, now, Devin, nobody knows, but Devin's Family Crest, Devin's Family Crest features the word terror or fear. I can't remember. It's on my five, my range five template, or my five forward. It says dread fear. It's the family motto. Yeah, so pure terror, folks. Merrick was out there, and he was very scary. I, I can't think of anything I would have done differently. Um, I mean, what I wanted to happen, happened. I got in on the bomber very quickly. I got a lucky round and just just punked it real bad. And Merrick got separated out from the rest of the crew. And I needed to either get him, I needed to get him separated out. That was, that was the key strategy. Uh, Hilariously, uh, I might have done some stuff differently because I did my math wrong and I thought Merrick was worth one more point. We were just talking about this outside. Than, than Quick Draw yeah, was. Quick, quick he, Draw was worth was one not. more point yeah, than yeah. Merrick. So uh, I could have actually bailed at the end and just ran all my ships away. Or PTL. Uh, we don't run for yeah, points. I mean, no, PTL I'm very run. glad I never realized that because um, <laughs> I was so scared. Maybe I would have. Anyway. Devin, what about you, bud? Would you have done anything different? Uh, I mean, the... When I was talking to you, and, and to be honest, I was talking to Aaron before the match too, and I, I said I was 97% on my list. And the 97% was I hadn't decided that, that second crew on the bomber. Right. And that was, I was up in the air between Kylo and Vader and Upspec and Tactician, and, and I had a lot of choices there. Um, I had Boshek on that for a while. I love Boshek. And, and, and to be crew. honest, despite the fact that that was like... To me, the piece that defined the match, right, was the bomber, and like trying to isolate my mistake there was definitely not only how I defined the bomber's role. You can see how uh, on the I think the third and the fourth turns, like I'm doing green maneuvers, but no one's at range one. Right, like I didn't keep the bomber back the way I should have. I put it way out front. With I mean, just how I used it with the systems officer wasn't quite correct, and I didn't expect. To be honest, I didn't expect Aaron to... The reason I did that was I didn't expect Aaron to isolate it and destroy it right away. I expected him to like try and go for some of the squishier ships. Like the Academy uh, Pilot, like for the example. Aca- yeah. I, I tried to make the Academy Pilot a problem. Give me you got that focus. one turn where you got the Academy Pilot behind one of his strikers. With the focus yeah, target yeah. lock. And it was great. Like a that couple thing of was times. doing work. Like, sure, I should, clearly I should have just brought eight, eight Academies. That's fine. There's like one round around, like, fifth round of shooting where I'm just like, okay, that Academy has done too much work. All, all <laughs> sips on him. Die. That right. valedictorian is going down. <laughs> right, but I wanted that, like, on round one or two of shooting. Like, I wanted you focusing on the, on the Academy who would be able to tank some of that damage with the green dice versus the bomber and then I didn't clear I I read like the top half of the uh, the first crit and the bottom half of the second crit and was like oh I just clear it it's like oh no you gotta roll for that uh, right so I, I tried to clear I tried to clear the uh, minus one agility and the uh Versus the major explosion, which if I cleared the major explosion, major I would yeah. major hull breach. Yeah. If I cleared that one instead, I would have. I would have lived, yeah. right? So, oh. like, I Holy feel like the splat man, Robin. That's, that's right, and then I get intelligence agent. Then I get to like do a green one. I get to pass a target lock to Merrick. He gets to go do a do a hard three into the combat with a target lock focus evade. You know that makes a big difference. Much different. So let, yeah. let, let's take that concept of of what ifs and what is and could is and let's see the second question I had for both of you guys today and I'll start with Devin on this one uh, what was the what was the other list what was the backup list that you you went with this one for the final what was the other one that you had on your short list at the end there really wasn't a backup list so Aaron and I touched base before this you know we were both bosses we're both organizers 
right? Like, he founded the PTL, I took the torch, right? Like, we wanted this to be, like, a great match. So, beforehand, we agreed to minimum four ships, no TLT, no PAL. Great. No mind link. No mind link. And no guns for hire. If no I'm guns saying. for hire. We were talking about guns for hire, I but I thought that was going to be really unfair well, to Jeff the rest and I of the talked league. about this in the crafts as well, yeah. Yeah, it would be really unfair to the rest of the league who didn't have access to those aces, right? And then we're just going to take those aces, right? We allow guns for hire. Aaron and I are both taking guns for hire aces. Well, you guys put on a great show for the final. We're all really appreciative. Well, like part of the PTL, right, is you, at the, the further on you get, like I've now played 10 games. I cannot repeat named pilots. Nope. Right? Yeah. Or like, the same number of generics. Neither, neither of us had Howl Runner, neither of us had Vader. <laughs> yeah, we both used Howl Runner and Vader, and we both chose Imperial List. Because we wanted this game to be positioning and arcs and just a really good game. It certainly was that. What about you, Aaron? What was your uh, what was your backup list to your, your, your other fallback? Uh, I had two Karthak Pirates with Auto Blasters and Intel Agent on one of them, Fen with PTL and Sunny Bounder with the Light Skick. That would have been a pretty bad matchup that would have been for you. Brutal. I wanted to play Merrick. I wanted to play Kestel. The other two ships were like, uh, "Well, let's what what benefits Kestel and, and Merrick?" Right? In the end, I went with what I went with because Devin's an Imperial player. And I like to play in the wheelhouse of my opponent. I always do. It's like a little tribute type deal, and uh, and uh, you know the strikers are just so much damn fun. They are a lot of fun. Oh man! And two seasons ago, we saw Aaron beat Graham in the season Alan, finale. Yeah. Alan, Alan beat. Alan beat Aaron with four in Imperial trainees and a Doom Shell. And a Doom Shell. Brutal. Like Brutal match. Channel. One of the best matches in X-Wing totally I've ever true. seen. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, let's finish off with our last question. We'll start with Aaron. Um, what is your favorite thing about the Prototype Toronto League? Well, it's the guys. Besides me, of course. And, and, <laughs> and Billy's mutton chops. <laughs> I'm just chopped liver then. That's fine. That's it. Fine. Uh, Whatever. So the right. crew, the crew, the long-term crew is just like that we've been building is totally, totally. The reason I keep coming back, I hated that last meta. It was terrible. I was not doing tournaments. It's right. gone. Yeah. It's, it's gone. gone now. But the thing that kept me coming back to was the league and playing games with you guys. That's fun. Um, and, uh, I mean, I, I, I like the, the idea of, uh, with the league, I mean, the idea always was, like, actually get some rules in to curate the, uh, not the, the main game structure itself, but the, the way you're playing it each, each game. So, they're restructured. X-Wing has so much potential for this. And, you know, I mean, we're only starting to touch on it with old formats. We can keep going. We've got ideas. What about you? Thank you very much, Aaron. What about you, Dem? What's your favorite thing about the, the PTL? I, I love that the league takes... There's, like, two types of good players, right? There's good players, and there's netlisting good players. Yeah. Right? They're good at the game, but they netlist, and then there's guys who are just, like, good at the game. And the PTL forces the guys who netlist to play other ships. They go with the other ships. It forces them into the other category eventually. Which ultimately time. makes yes, you a better player. It's a player. forced conversion. We're yeah. like, you're a netlister. We have a cure. We don't tell them it's a cure, <laughs> but we force them to do a couple seasons. But like, it means... Like and, and like the bottom... That's, that's the top third of the guys. And the bottom third of the guys get better because of it. And you're, you're not just playing the same list over and over and over again when you show up to a game night. You're playing all sorts of different lists. And all of the good players are rotating their lists. They're playing something different. They're hunting... Like hunting for like four ship rebel lists. They're hunting for like double ghost lists. They're hunting for lists like Mean Girls, like the the, the double shadow caster and a and a seek, right? Like well, you it's get to, you, just the you, best. You get to the point now where like to your point, you get the netlisters, the guys who've only had that in their wheelhouse up until then. We'll search on the internet, find what's good, play that. The first time they bring a list that you know according to the internet is awesome and it gets tabled by some silly janky PTL nonsense. But we have they that. They realize that there's more to it. This isn't Magic the Gathering where you no. just Google what's best and play that. You you'll you'll to, get beat by someone who's better at positioning. To, you have to get. You have to understand the mechanics of positioning and target priority in the yeah. game, and, 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 and go about it strategically. And we had guys. Aaron had Rourke, Jess, Rex, and that was a great uh, semifinal Biggs, by the way. And we had a couple of guys take that to Naboo. We had fair ship before fair ship. We had. We had Nick uh, Nick Nick Curry, who's no longer with us, unfortunately. He's moved on to Warhammer, but he played uh, Paratani before Paratani. Like we get, we've got so much experimentation going on in the league and by extremely good players that we're sort of seeing some of these medalists before they're meta, right? A good player will hit on something, and then all of a sudden we'll be we'll be fighting it, and then we'll run into a medalist that's 
off or just like maybe 10% more efficient or just like it's in a different place but they'll be close enough that you've got experience with it you're like oh I know how to play against a four ship rebelist that's really hard to kill because I've played against Aaron like four times in league and he just keeps bringing four ship rebelists what a jerk or imperials <laughs> or imperials I mean I mean you just you just showed your imperial cred I mean not, not to not to speak ill but you know, like we've got some incredible thought going on here into this building and the meta and what's happening, and even the meta thought that you need to do when you make the cut in the PTO when you hit top eight and you've got to look back over six or seven games. What have I or, played? What have my opponents played? Or eight or nine, like in the finals, like I'm looking back over nine of Aaron's games. Well, Jeff, looking back over nine Jeff of mine. brought that what? topic up because we had to print out your lists for uh, Just for the final case. year. I don't know if either of you realize this, but entering either of your names into the search field of the it's PTL it's group looking for posts and trying to narrow There's it down. 30, Listen, <laughs> over the next two months, I've got 30, I've got 30 time delayed posts going up in the next two months, and that's just like me not liking a post because liking a post will end up in the search. Oh so. man, it's, it's Force Ghost Devin. Yeah, the Force Ghost Devin. It yeah. is Force Ghost Devin. I promise you do Tuesdays. You got to remember. Oh, did I? I ain't doing this Tuesday. I'm asleep. <laughs> Folks, we'd like to thank uh, VTTV Live again uh, for uh, casting and helping v us promote v our career. Look, VTTV makes the best content, best X-Wing content on, on on YouTube, on the planet Earth. Can't deny. And uh, thank you to our boss battle finalists and to my co-caster, Jeff Siri, our judge, Billy Chandler. And, Billy uh, deserves a big yeah. shout-out. That was probably the most intense workout we could give a judge. Yeah, it's what I mean, I mean he, he had to repost. First round me. of the game, I knocked my defender over. I noticed that. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't like tipping your king in chess, right? It was. It's like, oh, I'm playing Aaron. Done. Eric. But, yeah. I mean, almost. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm done. Fine. Well, thanks, folks. I'm Timbo Slice again. Devin and Aaron, uh, we're all the Prototype Toronto League, and we're going to sign off. <laughs>